Come on. There we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Chelsea Fancast. I am, of course, Stamford Chidge, and uh, we have a slightly different show tonight. All will be revealed. But the title of this show is called The Big Push. Now, there's a reason for that, because as well as myself and the lovely Tony Glover. Good evening, good evening, and bonsoir, and bienvenue, and feel come in. And... Marge 2, Tony, Marge 2. Marge 2, indeed. Yes. Well, anyway, you know, people say, don't they, Tony, that we ain't got no history, yeah? They do. Well, we might not have any history. We might not have any history, but we do have three Chelsea historians. We do, indeed. We do, we do. And they are, of course, our very own, our very own lovely, fantastic Alex Churchill. Hello. Hello. We We also have one quarter of the podding shed. That was <laughs> Mr. Johnny Dyer. Good evening. Lovely to see you. And uh, a man who has witnessed me more drunk than most people have ever had the displeasure of seeing, but is also a fine historian and another Chelsea supporter, the lovely Andrew Holmes. I think the second time on this show, Andrew, only about 12 years apart. I think it is. I mean, you know, here's to 2026. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't remember you being that drunk, but I do spend a lot of my life. You were, you were as drunk, people. mate. That's yeah. why. There, there is that as well. Well, <laughs> I dispute that. You were drunk, oh yeah? Or was it dire? Uh, well, no, I think that, if, as I recall, when we left the fish market, Holmes and Dyer were oh. pretending that they were being upright yeah. citizens and going yeah. to stay for a jolly more couple of beers or whatever. Waited until we were outside and went, thank fuck for that, now we can go back. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. my recollection of the whole I thing. Think, I, I have you right there, Tony. Now, listen, I called the show The Big Push for a reason. We have three uh, military historians with us who are all wonderful Chelsea supporters. One of you explain The Big Push. In fact, I'm going to ask Alex, ladies first. Alex, tell the listener about The Big Push. First World War expression. I don't think it's. It, I don't think it's specific to any particular campaign. But you know, all of these pushes to try and basically push Germany out of France and Belgium. Well, I I, I hate to argue with a, 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 a an exalted, learned military historian, but I did check Wikipedia before the show. Which, <laughs> you know, which, as we all know, is the font of all knowledge. And they said the big push was the 1916 campaign in the Somme, which is why I thought the title would be very appropriate, given what we're going to talk about tonight. Might have been the first time they'd use it, because that was our first big campaign effort where it we was. were front and centre. So, so there we go. I, sh- I should put a warning out, though, that when we wrote this, my name came first, then Holmes, and Di gets like a thank you, because he was like <laughs> an embryonic baby historian. Uh, but he's now the smartest person in the room, so you can direct all the complicated questions to him. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, officially, I'm officially the thickest one here. So, oh, yeah. no, no, no. I think me and Tony can, can run uh, you very yeah. close there, Holmes. Yeah, very much you're not, so. You're not, you're, we're not having that. No way. Yeah. We're just slightly, regret, slightly regretting the third pint now, but never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you... Yeah, well, you're the PhD it. wanker. You didn't think we would have let that slide, did you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Alex, thank you. you, you you've, you've, uh, you've contributed brilliantly already. We're now going to call Di a PhD, PhD wanker for the rest of the show. <laughs> And the whole of the trip in June, I think. And the whole of the trip in June. More of which very, very much later, because there is a very good reason why I've got these lovely people on, not just because, I, I, you know, they're they're great mates. I haven't seen Johnny and and, and Holmes for a long time, Uh, far too long. So it's lovely to catch up with them. But, of course, we are uh, about to embark in June on our second Chelsea fan cast uh, World War I battlefield tour to the Somme and Ypres. And I know we've been winning on about it in the show for a, you know quite a long time now. We've had Alex on as well to talk about it. Um, but I thought, actually, 
it would be fun as it's an international break and there's bugger all to talk about, really. Honestly, people, don't believe Twitter or Sky or TalkSports. There's bugger all to talk about, okay? So I thought we'd use the opportunity to have a get-together and this lot can really tell you what this tour is about with some proper knowledge rather than me rabbiting on and checking Wikipedia for facts. Anyway, uh, we will, however, having said all that, in part one, we will talk about Chelsea because I've not had a chance to talk to, to these two about Chelsea either for a long time, so I can't can't resist, really. But uh, mo mainly the show will be about the trip to the Salmon Eep. Now, don't forget, of course, you can listen to the show live. There's no JK. I'll have to do it live every Monday and Friday at 7.30 p.m. or there or thereabouts by going to YouTube now, YouTube and Facebook, the Facebook this fan page. Your live you, what, what? Fix JK. What? you what? What what what? Is this the first one never to feature JK. Uh no. I don't know where it wasn't working for him when he walked out. I've given him the night off before, mate. All oh, right, okay. He did you're right, he did walk off halfway through one show. But of did. course we manfully carried on, hard though it was to carry on without. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so you can you can actually watch us live now, YouTube and Facebook, and uh, also, of course, you can listen to us live on Mixler, which is chelsea-fancast.mixler.com. Uh, and the beauty of all of that is that other, other than seeing our ugly mugs, and as I said for this, this lot before I want to, I've tried a bit of a trick with the lighting, you see, to make the green screen work, which actually I have to say has been quite successful. Apart from the fact it's made me look a, a bit like Alan Brazil in the morning, I, I have the same hue. So I'm not quite sure how that's happened, but there we go. I assure you, I'm not this drunk or not this red, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, you can follow us on all the socials at Chelsea Fancast. Listen, uh, subscribe, and like, and all that razzmatazz on Acar, Spotify, Apple, and all good podcast platforms. And make sure you leave us a glowing five star review. Uh, a very quick mention to Patreon. Hello to all the lovely people who who uh, have uh, you know joined the Patreon website, which of course is really just an excuse for you to bung us money every month without the menaces, I hasten to add. Uh, but it does all help. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to do that too, it's patreon.com forward slash Chelsea Fancast. And if you do, and if you want one, I will send you a mini Kerry Dixon banner, a replica of the one that hangs in the Matthew Harding. And of course, you can join our Discord group, which is basically like Mixler, but 24-7. And the one final thing, I have to tell you before I shut my bloody outlook down, which is making a racket whenever I get an email, thank you, good night, is we have a bit of this at the moment, which is filling me with glee and excitement. Check this out. Yes, we've got T-shirts. We've got T-shirts. If, if they sell Connor, we riot. There's a lovely pic of me in the pub on Paddy's Day, suitably armed with a Guinness. Uh, so there you go. You can get a T-shirt or, or, even better, you've got mugs. Got little white ones and ones with blue in them as well. Aren't they lovely? And they've got, if they sell Connor, we riot on there, which, of course, uh, many of us would uh, firmly agree with if uh, if you actually love Chelsea properly, like you should do. So if you want to show your support for Connor and us, uh, you can get the T-shirt by going to uh, the website, which is chelseafancast.com forward slash category forward slash merchandise. Um, Basically, you, you've got all, all the sizes there, men's and women's T-shirts available. You can pay via PayPal if you use the uh, do, do use the friends and family selection, though, if you're on PayPal. Prices are 25 quid, including postages and packing in the UK, 28 quid in Europe, 30 quid in North America. Uh, other uh, deliveries to places overseas are also available, but you have to ask. So there you go. Um, all the orders and PayPal is via the Chelsea special at gmail.com com you know it makes sense go and get one now there are going to be other t-shirts uh, kicking around as well actually uh, we've got a few more lined up which uh, we will let you know sooner the time uh, right we'll be back after this very short break Ah, lovely. It always makes me feel quite good, that does. I don't know why. Right, the first thing we should really do is to find out what uh, PhD wanker, also known as Johnny Dyer, 
and Holmes have been up to because, you know, I mean, you know, may, maybe Tony should be interviewing Johnny at this point because, of course, you know, he's stuck on 99 episodes of The Podding Shed, probably Dyer's fault, I would imagine. So, Johnny, I, last Nothing time, to do with me. Yeah. No, whatsoever. Last, last time I, I handed, saw you... I handed the reins over. I can't remember the last time I saw you. What have you been doing? I know you've been busy studying, haven't you? Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? I have. I, I've fully immersed myself in, in the First World War. I... I there was very little to do in lockdown, as we, as we all remember. So I, I signed up for a, a MA course at Wolverhampton University in the first Great Britain in the First World War. Uh, I passed that beginning of last year. Um, and uh, did you not win an award? Don't oh, be I, it is indeed an award-winning dissertation. Um, I've, I've yet to actually receive the reward. I, I received the financial award, but apparently there's a trophy, but I've yet to see it. And I'm not sure. A bit like I'm Arsenal and Spurs, really. I, I would say my trophy cabinet is is bereft at the moment, um, and I, I didn't really know what else to do with myself other than to continue studying because there was just this sort of huge void. Um, so I signed up and uh, I'm doing a PhD in Great Britain and well, the First World War. Um, and yes, it consumes much of my life. Um, I, I don't get to see Chelsea a lot these days, um, but I intend to be at the United game on the fourth of April. I think it is. Um, and hopefully to have a beer with you, Chidge, and Tony as well. That would be very, very nice. Now, Mr. H- Mr. Holmes, uh, I haven't seen you for a long time. I-, I generally think the last time I saw you was on the last trip, and, and the-, the interesting thing about that trip, it- it's, it's, I mean, it was so much fun. We're going to talk all about it, I know, later on, but that particular trip was wonderful because it was so bloody warm and sunny, but of oh, course yeah. it was also the last kind of, I-, I think it was the last kind of decent trip I had before COVID, locked us all down you know i mean i had a wedding in glasgow which was bloody good actually as it happens uh literally the last weekend before we were all told to stay indoors but that was the last kind of summer trip i had so it's kind of etched in my mind as this kind of mythical wonderful four days of absolute brilliance and that was the last time i saw you mate so what have you been up to since um, i mean um i mean nothing to the same level as johnny obviously um but yeah so I, you're, I, I, you're not a phd wanker then no, no. I'm mean, I'm a sort of GCSE grade D wanker if we've got to put some sort of qualification on it. Um yeah, I mean I keep my hand in. I mean I, I help Alex out Alex out with some of the great war group stuff. I write a column for their magazine on cemeteries and I take groups over there from time to time on sort of unofficial tours like mates and mates of mates and that. So I've kept my hand in really. Um but yeah, but I mean I think the thing about it is, I mean, it may be because it was the last trip you went on before COVID, but also when everybody who goes there fucking loves it, right? You know, that everyone wants to go back at some point. It's like the perfect mix of, you know, stuff during the day that gets rid of your hangover, and then you can start again in the evening. You've got lots of lovely bars and restaurants to choose from. So, you know, could be an element of that as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. 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 What's is that Alexa? Alexa, shut up. No, that was my Alexa because uh, someone's coming through the door. And be very careful who, when we say Alexa, because we've got an Alex in the house. Uh, right. So we're not talking to you, Alex. Um, Johnny, I mean, let's have a quick chat about Chelsea. Um, mm. You know, I haven't seen you to natter about Chelsea for a long time. Where are you at with Chelsea at the moment? How is your relationship with Chelsea at the moment? It's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an odd, we're in an odd situation. It's, it's, I would say, it, as a relationship status, it, it is indeed complicated. Um, I think we're, we're going through this really weird sort of phase of we, we are no longer the plaything of a billionaire. And I know that sounds like a really flippant way to describe a, a, an almost an incredible 20 years or, you know, nearly 20 years. We're now owned by a very hard nosed business consortium that's that's come in and really tried to sort of shake things up. Um whether we agree with how they've done it or not is um, is probably a matter for another another podcast entirely. Um I'm kind of hopeful. Um I don't like the owners and I don't think I ever will, but I, I, I'm not sure how many football fans really have that greater relationship with 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 the people who own them. Um there's some good players in there. I, you know, I, 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 Palmer, Gusto. I really like Jackson. I know he's a, he's a bit flaky, but I think there's a really good player I, I like, in there. I like him. He's a new. Yeah, hey, that's the thing. He's just a pest. You know, he's just yeah. one of those players that you could you, you just think, I, yeah, damn. You know, I don't really, I wouldn't really want to be playing against him. So I think there's kind of the the beginnings of a core of a decent side. I think it's 
it seems to have been really hard for the fan base at large to to have accepted that we are no longer sitting at the very top table in terms of winning trophies and all the rest of it. But that kind of that had kind of happened before all of this. Well, in the Premier League, it had. In the Premier League, yeah, I, the Champions League. I know it was was a really tremendous thing, but it feels like it was a bit of an outlier. Well, and the, and the of, World Club Cup and the Super Cup. Yeah, but it, it's kind of what have the Romans ever done for what us? The Romans have done, but no, I, I think it, yeah. Sorry, I'm I am talking in terms of sort of challenging for the league, which we haven't done. And we for, haven't since 2017. Yeah, it's near. been it's yeah. been a long time. I, I think um, you're right, John. I think just to jump in to support Johnny, I think yeah. Mm. And the, even in the Romans' last few seasons, I think we, you know, it was it was a sort of last almost last ever season, whether we finished fourth or not. I think, you know, I think the problems that we've got now in terms of the personnel haven't really been addressed. And I think you've discussed it on here before because I'm a, I'm a regular listener, you know, on my commute. In that, you know, since we since we haven't replaced Costa, you know, and... two listeners we have, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I just think it, it's it's hard to know where we are at the moment because it's it feels almost as bad as last season, but not quite as bad. And like most of you, I've been around for quite a while and I don't demand that we win stuff, but I think it's almost like there's no progress. And I don't know whether I'm posh in or out. I'm kind of on the fence with that at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult one with Poch. I mean, I, I, as you lot all know, I mean, I, I, I think he was the best appointment we could make at the time that we made it. Mm. Um, I think we're a singularly unattractive club at the moment for various reasons. Poch had the experience. The only gripe I have with Poch, I think, I think Poch is doing the best of a bad job. I think he's been a, a horrible hand with the injuries and a horrible hand with the strategy of having absolutely no experience and leadership in the side. And I don't count Thiago and uh, and Sterling because I, I, I mean, you know, Thiago doesn't want to be a captain, which says, I mean, I know he's mm. a wonderful world class defender, but he doesn't want to be the captain. And Sterling. I don't think it's captain material, so I don't count he's them. He's been berated a... into never being in charge of anything by Mrs. Yeah. Tiago, and he's just like yeah. <laughs> he's, think... he's brilliant at what he does, which is being a great defender, although he's probably on the decline. But, you yeah. know, I, my only gripe with Poch, is, and I said this the other week, didn't I, Tony? I think you were on the show. I said, look, yeah. he's got to engage with the supporters because – if he doesn't, they'll be he'll be done for because that's how it works at Chelsea. When when yeah. when when the supporters on mass get on the case of a manager, he's usually out soon afterwards. And I I I I don't want us to go back to square one again because that's I, what it I, think, that's, I think that's the odd thing in that it's quite noticeable with him that you know before you playing another team, he's quite effusive about the manager and the players whether he knows them or not. He seems to be like quite a you know, a benevolent guy to everyone else where he's never really taken to us. Now, I can kind of live with that because I'm big and old enough to do that. But it's seem, strategically wise from his point of view, that seems a little bit odd. He seems to go yeah. out of his way to, you know, say detached. Yeah, no, definitely. Alex, I mean, we, we have, we, we've been lucky enough to have you on the show fairly recently. And it's interesting hearing from people who haven't been on for a long, 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 long time. But um, it, it does seem, a, you know, that there's... It, 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 it's it's just such a surreal experience watching Chelsea at the moment, isn't it? Because, I mean, you know, we, we go there a bit uh, skittish, I think, when we watch them. But I actually think there has been some progress this season. I mean, Johnny was saying, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're learning to, to appreciate some of the players that we've got a bit more. They are, I mean, you know, they've, 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 got, a, they've got a really good record at Stamford Bridge recently. We're in the FA Cup semi-final. We, we, you know, kind of screwed it up in the League Cup final, it has to be said. But, you know... That I, I think there has been progress this season. Do you? Yeah, I think like the, there's unrealistic people out there, most of them screaming into the Twitter void about they think that a good season would be suddenly we're back in the top four again. Um, and they're, they're idiots. Um, it is better than it was last year. And they've surprised me a number of times as well when I have expected them to still be woefully unimpressed. I've just... I'm, started to feel my way back like my millennial attention span obviously is bereft anyway um but when your players look disinterested it's very hard to get worked up about anything um and I feel less like that this at this end of this season than I did maybe a year year and a half ago yeah definitely so Tony I mean I you know what, what would success mean this season what would be a successful season for Chelsea do you think right now I think Get into a final, which I don't really want us to do. And I know that sounds uh, kind of counterintuitive, but I think uh, the, the six defeats on the spin 
to kind of ground me down. I think the club could have done with three or four years away from a Wembley final just to go and get its kind of mojo back and 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 uh, want to win it again, not expect to win a trophy there again. And I think that includes the fans as well. I think, you know, we've been, we've been spoiled by, by that. And people say, well, you know, we failed in the League Cup. I mean, you, you, you sort of referred to it a bit earlier, but, you know, five of those six finals were um, pre this lot of owners. Yeah. And so I don't think it's all about that. I think it's a, there's a club culture. We've said it before, you know, they de-Romanised too quickly. There's no doubt about that. Um, and this is almost like as if there was a new thing called New Chelsea. I mean, they've, they've entirely turned... also known as New Brighton. Yeah, <laughs> they've, they've, <laughs> they've, 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 they've turned it inside out, and they're trying to build different structures. And it was very autocratic before, as we all know. Um, and I think you know, getting to the final would be remarkable for start. I think we have got no reason to fear Manchester City the way we've played them this season. Um, these guys are getting Alex just said they're getting better each game you know there was this this whole there, there seems to be a sort of cohort of fans out there who just utterly detest the idea that you know that that we can't win everything every year um and are unprepared yet we've been saying for years the club needed a reboot the, the Roman model had been found out as we said from 2017 onwards we've not even we've not laid a finger on the league um and I think Tuchel's mm. success kind of covered over some of the cracks you know let's face yeah. it we went into that final in Porto you, know, you could probably split the fan base 50 50 on who thought we'd win not me he might give us a yeah. good kick in yeah. um so I think success this season if we can get to where I, I I forecast six if we can get to that and I can't see any reason why we couldn't get to that inconsistency as part of our glorious unpredictability is, is still there but these players have not down tools. And, and it was interesting what, what, what Andrew said about he's, he's remained kind of detached from us. But I think that's because he senses the, the there's a, a fair amount of the fan base that still does the Spurs thing, even though he had a you know PSG in between um, and he didn't, you know, he was kicked out of Spurs. Um, that whole idea. And I've, I've had an argument recently with somebody, and I said, "You've got no idea if I told you who Glenn Hoddle was. Do you have any idea who he is? Because where he played, you know, and and why we've got this weird obsession with uh, with, with ex Spurs, I don't know. But I would stay say this. I think he's remained detached from the fans because of that, um, and I think that will come good next season. I think when you look at these players, they have knocked down tools for him. Sterling, even Sterling, who I've been particularly critical of. If you read the latest thing I put up in the fan cast, I've, I've kind of adopted a slightly more sympathetic attitude because there's, there's something wrong, you know, physically, mentally, whatever it is with him. Yeah, it's just and, not um, right, is you know, it? I don't, I don't really want to see a pylon happen simply because, you know, I, I, I saw the way we treated Mikel and Louise and all those players who we became boo boys for a little while, right? And it just doesn't help. I mean, you can't tell that to a person, of, you know, who's 28, who supported, started supporting us when Roman took over, because they've never known anything else. Yeah, it's a really we, good point. Yeah, so That's a very I good think point. six would be good. Get into the final. I think if we get to the final, we've got a really good chance, because yeah. that must have burned them. That must have burned them, that last one. Um, and Poch as well. So, uh, One I'm hopes. Not, yeah, I think I think Alex is right. We have progressed. We have, and, you can and I, see I look it. forward look forward to beating Coventry in the final. I mean, oh, what, I what's, a, what's a yeah? What's a good uh, what's a good season for you, Alex? Uh, yeah, I I would like to get to the FA Cup final. I think give them a, give them a chance to not utterly fail at Wembley because that you're right that will have hurt. So, and honestly, like who can really? Can, I know the league is all it's all about the league, but. The consistency is like the last thing to come, isn't it? After it all mm. starts clicking. And if we've made two cup finals in a season, then everyone can just shut up, really, can't they? Yeah. As long as we do we better than that again next year, shut up. Yeah. I think I think winning it would be massive. I mean, we all know what happened when Mourinho won his first uh, uh, titles, he likes to call them, when he beat Liverpool in the League Cup. And I think this is what this team needs as yeah. well. So I slightly yeah. disagree with Tone about it's too early. I think the other thing is if we, I mean, Christ, we've got to beat City to get there yet. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. But if we could do it, um, it would also lay that awful monkey off our back, which is the fact that we lost five of the previous ones all under the Abramovich era. It has to be said. 
Mm. So, you know, I think it would be great if we could. Uh, Holmes, what, what do you, uh, you know, what's a good season for you, mate? Yeah, I think the same as everyone else, really. I think my, my expectation was slightly lower than Tony's. I thought seventh would do. That gets into Europe. We don't win the cup, doesn't it? But I think I think there are thereabouts. I mean, you know, I guess the issue we've had, we've, we're always, we look at the table and we're like, okay, we're about four points or six points behind and we think we're going to claw this back. And then we like drop loads of points. So hopefully a corner has been turned and we can claw this back and finish seventh or something like that. I think that would be fine. I'm happy with not being in the Champions League and as you say, hopefully making it to another final. Yeah, good on you. And uh, and uh, last but by no means least, uh, we go to the most intelligent person in the room. Uh, he's th- therefore called the PhD wanker. Yes, it is you, Johnny. Um, so this is the words that will count. Uh, where you know what's the decision for you, mate? No, I just I I, I concur with my learned friends. Um, a, a final, another final would be great. I think that that would be fantastic. You can never tire of of going to Wembley finals, despite our, our relatively shit record of of late. Um, yeah, I, I think just to, it kind of goes back because obviously I've not been on for a while and I've not talked to you about it for a while. But I kind of go back to 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 what happened when the, the Clear Lake lot arrived and whatever we think about them. How many times have you read the headline on on the back pages where people journos get bored in the summer and go, you know, massive clear out, fifteen players to go, ten new ones to arrive. And it's bollocks because it never happens, but we actually did it. So it was this just ridiculous experiment, which some of it has worked and some of it clearly hasn't. Mm. But I I think where we've got to now is actually pretty good. Uh, there was there was a period if you'd have, if we'd have talked about this maybe two, three months ago, I didn't think we'd finish much above mid table this mm. season. I couldn't really see us going anywhere other than that. And I, I I'm trying to, I want to dig out, you know, where I've said on WhatsApp groups, I said, you know what, I think we'll, we'll lose games that people think we absolutely should win hands down. I think we'll win games that people think we shouldn't. We're just going to be really erratic and we're going to be frustrating and just, ah, and we have, but like everyone, like, Andrew and Alex have said, there's improvement. There's quite clear improvement. We've got goals in us. We're more entertaining. Yeah, there's massive screw-ups. So I watched, you're watching the Newcastle game, that absolute farcical Keystone Cops juggling of balls and passing across the box for their equaliser. You just look at it and think, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so there is there are moments of madness, but I think there is a, <laughs> there is a team in there somewhere. There is a good side. Yeah, that is fighting to get out, and I think it will. I think it will. I, I think with those moments of madness as well. I think we've been a little bit unlucky, and that they, you know, they yeah. exist and they exist through footwittery, but everyone seems to convert them into a goal. Whereas normally, mm. you know, you convert <laughs> half of them or a third of them, but every time there's a slight fuck up, they tend to score. You know, I can't remember who it was against, but there was a breakaway, and Colville ran back. Colville ran back, got a block in, then it deflected off, and then yeah. you know, beat it at the near post, and nine times out of ten, that be saved. So. We do tend to get punished quite harshly for these little mistakes. But yeah. Good point. Good point, Holmes. Yeah. I think the bottom line is like this is one for the teenagers. Like a bottle of Grolsch, this team will take time. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I thought I thought you'd thought you'd appreciate that. Right. Now I, there's something really, really important happening tomorrow, Saturday, the twenty uh, third of March. Uh and it's not the fact that there's no football. I know that how much we applaud and delight in that fact, but uh, no, it is this. It is the big Stamford Bridge sleepout. Yes, indeed. Uh, now, uh, sadly, as you you may know by now, I cannot go. I'm I'm absent without leave tomorrow. I'm actually going up to Birmingham to go and see uh, Jazz Coleman do a Q and A. That's my excuse, and I just basically. I'm a victim of bad planning on my part, but that's there's no excuse for you not to support this. It's really really important. Uh, because they'll be supporting Stoll and Barons Court project by, uh, have you know, basically loads of people are going to be sleeping out on the bottom of the East Stand floor. It's bloody horrible, mate. I've done it four years in a row, so I can tell you it's not not easy. All the money raised is going to be shared between these two great charities, uh, and it will enable vital work to end homelessness and support vulnerable and disabled veterans to lead fulfilling independent lives. Uh, now, last year, we raised uh, £26,000, and uh, obviously, we're hoping to better that. Uh, all you have to do, all you have to do is you have to go to uh, justgiving.com forward slash campaign 
forward slash big stamp for bridge sleep out 2024 and if you do that you can donate now uh tony i know has donated today haven't you i have i did indeed uh, because um if you donate to everybody of course we'd all be probably down the bankruptcy court um for all the people that are going to it um and i just wanted to wait until the last minute and um it's mark me and who's part of the the fan cast group but also the chair of chelsea supporters trust um uh, and he's such a lovely bloke. He, he's he's got such a lovely manner about him, and all this. And I thought, do you know what? I'll, I'll I'll follow his link, thinking that I was sponsoring him. But I think it's, it's a generic one, isn't it? It's a generic um, Stanford Bridge sleep out one. Um, and do you know, I keep meaning to do it one year. I keep meaning to. You should do it. it. I'm going to do it one year. Is it? Do you sleep on the concourse or actually in the? Seat you know, you know the you know the the, the 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 on the ground floor, the east stand concourse mm. is exactly that. That's where oh, everybody right. sleeps. And so it's, uh, if it's you're, very open then. It, well, yeah, if you're really lucky, uh, yeah. there's a howling wind blowing through there that makes the wind chill <laughs> factor minus fifteen. Uh, and there's a nice so there railway line next to it as well. Yeah, and rats. No, no, there aren't rats. Well, there might be. It's London. Um, I mean, look, if you like frostbite and backache, this is for you. Go and do it. <laughs> you know, I've been there before. But if you're really lucky, Uncle Rob uh, brings along uh, doctored oranges. That's all I'm prepared to say on the matter. Okay. <laughs> but they will warm you up. Um, but yeah, it's a good cause. I myself have donated today out of sheer guilt. And I, I went through and there are about 14 people I know pretty well on there or who I've been in the trenches with appropriately enough uh, on the sleep outs. And I've given them all each a small amount, which has now added up to a fucking fortune. But that's my fault for feeling guilty, really, isn't it? But listen, what I will say is go out there and no, d uh, donate. Uh, I'll remind you of the thing. It's uh, justgiving.com forward slash campaign forward slash big Stamford bridge sleep out 2024. So go and donate. For all of those taking part, I, I wish you huge luck and uh, please try not to get too cold and uh, and don't annoy Tim Rolls as he's doing an all night readathon because he never he never sleeps. He just reads one of his books, not one of his. He's books, actually doing it on his kitchen floor, isn't he? This year, is he not going there this no, year? No, I think he's he's, oh. he's he's got a bad. He's got something wrong with his back. I mean, yeah, well, it's probably because you know, he's been the sleep outs for the last four years. As mate. many of us, uh, as we approach our our senior years, um, you know. Uh, something's going to give and it's usually the back so i think he's actually doing it on his kitchen floor well um, fair play fair play yeah. i don't blame him i don't blame him well good luck to all of you doing it tomorrow night um you're doing us all proud right uh very quick shout out as we always do to the wonderful cfc uk the world's greatest ever fanzine not just because i write for it uh lots of much better writers than i am they all write for it too uh many of whom you love and know um, in fact, actually, funny enough, it just reminded me there's a deadline tonight, so I shall be staying up late tonight to write some load of old waffle, no doubt. Now, um, all you have to do is you go to the stall, the CFC UK stall, uh, before every home match, which means you get a copy of your favourite fanzine. It's opposite Fulham Broadway, and you can subscribe to it if you can't get to the matches. If you can't hear that wonderful cry of, hurry up, it's only a pound, then you can get it posted to you if you email fanzine at cfcuk.net. Uh, 20 quid for a year subscription in the UK, 45 quid in Europe, 60 quid for the rest of the world, or you can get it emailed to you as a PDF, which will cost you six quid for a year or appropriately a pound each. You can do all of that via PayPal. And uh, as well as the good old CP, uh, sorry, CFC UK, you've also got CPO, which uh, given a time of uncertainty around our dear beloved Chelsea Football Club and certainly where it may or may not be playing, uh, it might be a good idea to get yourself a CPO share because that means you will have a share of the freehold of the stadium, uh, which means basically when the discussions are had about either redeveloping it or relocating it, you will have a say because, of course, uh, it belongs to the Chelsea pitch owners, as does the name Chelsea FC. Uh, a very good idea developed by Ken Bates uh, in the early 90s to prevent the, uh, the, the ground being sold to a rapacious property developer in the future now uh, 110 quid for an electronic share or about 175 quid for a framed share signed by a chelsea player the one in the picture on screen is actually signed by frank lampard i believe so there we go uh, go to chelseafc.com forward slash chelsea hyphen pitch hyphen owners uh, or just email comms at chelsea pitch owners.com and you can follow them on twitter or x uh, at pitch owners Yes, indeedy. Right. We're going to have a, a very quick break. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking all about the Chelsea Fancast Battlefield Tour to the Somme and Eep. See you in a sec. Real fans, real opinions. 
I'm Jason Cundy, and you're listening to the Chelsea Football Fancast. Proper Chelsea. Footballfancast.com. Welcome back. It's Stamford Chidge here, the Chelsea Fancast. Uh, the Big Push, episode 1121 tonight. And the reason we're calling it The Big Push is because we've got some exalted historians and big Chelsea supporters with us. And they are the wonderful, the lovely, one of my favourite people on the planet, the lovely Alex Churchill. Hello. We've got Mr. Holmes, an absolute legend in his own lunchtime. Evening. And we've got Dyer, who's gone off for a pee, I think. Yeah, his blood yeah. has got the better of him. He's, just a, he's a pee wanker, not a PhD wanker. Yeah. But he'll be, he'll be back in a minute, bless him. Uh, and last but by no means least, my partner in crime, my old mucker, Mr. Tony Glover. Good evening. It's so lovely to be here. It is, isn't it? I mean, what he's else actually, you is, uh, I just Anywhere Alex is, I'm quite happy, you know. So I was going to say, you, if you want to do the sleep out next year, we can spoon. <gasps> as long as you're not tromboning, that's all I'm going to say. Hold on a minute, I'm just my head, my head's just gone boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, Tony missed that gag. Dyer missed it because he's having a yeah, pee. I, I, I at didn't least Holmes laughed. Holmes and Alex both back. chortled. They chortled at my naughtiness. I, I was just imagining everyone not getting much sleep because of a big brass instrument. I don't know what you were talking about. But... <laughs> well, I'm sure Tony's been called many things, but never a big brass instrument. But there we go. Maybe that's being unfair. Hello, Jake. J Johnny Dyer. Nice to see you. Just oh. popping to the bar. I was just going to say, you know, Tony, you know, have you noticed something about the show tonight? Have I noticed something yeah. about the show tonight? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So I, I have. I have. I would venture forth that tonight so far, touch wood, it has not been an absolute shambles. No, it hasn't been. Normally we would have uh, several um, bits of uh, omni shambles by now, wouldn't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and at the moment, it's uh, the only thing that's kind of distracting, really, is, is just, just how bloody red your face is. Oh, yeah. Red face. Say, Alan, Alan Brazil would be. Looking, yeah, Alan Brazil would be looking at you and thinking, well, God, glad I ain't that bad. Yeah, at least I'm not as fat as he is, anyway. Yeah, good point. <laughs> now, I was just wondering that, that no JK, no shambles. Is it a coincidence? Only time will tell. You know, only time will tell. I, I, I've only got good things to say about JK because, of course, he let me. Uh, I entered oh, his lair. He did. At Stanford Bridge for the new. You sat in posh seats, didn't you? Where I did. Roast did. Swan. They let him in. More to the point, Johnny. Yeah. yeah, I dined on the finest mead and roast swan. It was it was like a Henry VIII, who I know Alex loves, uh, like a Henry VIII um, <laughs> uh, banquet. It was it was it was very very good. But but but, but. Um, I will say, angry boy, who sits no behind yeah. Gary, what an annoying. Absolute parcel of twattery he is, um, and 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 the fact that this guy Gary sat next to him is one of JK's friends on the table was so bloody polite to him because all he kept saying was he kept, uh, the one that really got me was the um, no width no width we've just literally gone down the wing with gusto and put a cross in. And he's going no width. I'm thinking any minute now I'm going to fucking say something to you, and it's not going to be. I say, old chap, I was I just people like you should go to tennis. Fucking I know, idiot. I know. Anyway. Well, you know, that's what I'm glad you're back with the oiks now. Yes, you know, yes, exactly. Now, uh, we don't have oiks on the show tonight, we just have very learned, erudite, intelligent, as well as beautiful and charming people. And the leader amongst them, of course, is the wonderful Alex Churchill of this parish, as Tony might say. Uh, and we're now going to talk about the uh, you know, the Chelsea fancast World War One tour part one, the Somme. Um, where do we start, Alex? I mean, who, whose baby was this? I mean, because you, you know, we all went on it a few years ago, you know, and we all had an absolutely cracking time. Is, is, is this your brainchild? Uh, I don't remember. I think if I'm the adult in this scenario, we're you all you are the adult in the room at the moment, it has to be said. Um, we're all doomed. Uh, I can't, I can't even remember. I think you wanted to go. I did, hmm. guys. Do you remember? We I, had I did, a chat, because, didn't we? I remember now. We had a few it? drinks and a chat, and we and, and and we said, "What a bloody good idea!" And I, I, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, it was as simple as that, as I recall. And then it was out on my Facebook or something. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and it was just. Um, I seem to remember being very uh, 
both excited and a bit nervous uh, about it, really, because I'm was going to—I'm just going to be geeked out, aren't I? I'm just going to have people going, "Oh, and this one over here is such and such, such a." Luckily, there are only one or two people who were like that on that particular trip, Alex. I can see you. Um, you know, she knows who I mean. Uh, but the rest of it was—it was fantastic. And even though there was near disaster with the night before. Um, with uh, the issue with the the, the transport, which God, yeah, meant, I forgot about that. Honestly, we were, we might as well have been in an ice cream van. It was that it was that uncomfortable in that lot in that in that van. Remember how packed it was. I just my only memory of the actual driving about is. Um, Pete I told you, I told you it wouldn't last long about the shambles, didn't I? We've <laughs> we've got shambles. Shambles has arrived in in excellent form. For fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I can't even make it go away. That's time cop, and we I will know. go there again. That's part two, mm. mate. Okay. Um, well, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just carry on telling everyone about my favourite Pete Trenter moment driving the, yeah. the uh, yeah. ice cream. Just for, for avoidance of doubt, he's not buried there, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> when he finally lost it with all those Belgian cyclists and just drove at them, going, get out the fucking way. <laughs> Yeah, mad. I can't. I, I'm gonna have to remove it from the studio and add it back in. It's just it's all gone very wrong. Anyway, ignore me. Listen. Um, let's not bore people with the uh the trip from uh wherever we depart. Actually, that's a good point. Where are we? Where are we going from this year? Where do we all have to meet up? I'm gonna wait until the 29th when the bulk of those already on it pay and see where everybody lives and just try right. and make it as fair as possible. Okay. Where's it? Okay, if you were, a, if I was a betting man, where where would I put my money on it being? I would probably recommend grabbing a cheap hotel room in Maidstone. <sighs> okay, yeah, all right, okay. That's a, thank you for the heads up. That's quite a dr Maidstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have okay. no idea where Maidstone is, but then it's in Kent, mate. It's in yeah, Kent. Kent. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. Oh yeah. look yeah. at the cat! Sorry, I'm, I'm being told everything. Yeah. There's a cat. <laughs> I'm being utterly beaten by a cat here at the moment. Yeah, it's because uh, you're trying to stop it showing its butthole. That's what they do on Zoom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everyone wants to see my butthole, Dad. Let go of me. Yeah, this is Frankie, yeah. by the way. And he, he, Frankie, he is, let's see your butthole, mate. He is actually I've done it again. I've done it again. Time Court makes so, an appearance yet again. This is where I, I, I you know, he normally thinks he's a parrot at this stage, sitting on his shoulder like I'm Long John Silver. Get off. I can't fry him off because if I do, he's likely to. Um... Well, we'll leave, we'll leave you with Frankie and his butthole, uh, yeah. Alex. Um, as I said, let's not bore people with the the trip to Maidstone, the trip uh, under the channel, uh, on, on, you know, on a funny train, it, and you regaling us with hilarious stories, and then arriving in Calais. I mean, as I recall, I mean, I'm presuming the plan is going to be much the same as it was last time. So, are we going to head to Delville Wood first? We will, but because last time we surprised you, didn't we? We oh, well, that was going to say, yeah, Ambre, um, which was Holmes's brainchild. He did all the work on that, and I love him for it. And we have, I think, so far we have three people that have submitted their family stuff. Oh, I'll do that. And, and Holmes, <laughs> Holmes has been mired in Royal Garrison artillery artillery records. So yeah, just the hardest unit to find anyone and where they are and what they're doing. And we have a couple of them, but he's done it. Yeah, we got lucky so far. I mean, I think I think it's broadly going to follow the same pattern as last time, uh, subject to a few tweaks. I think Alex, we said last night, didn't we? We're going to start at um, Newfoundland Park, Beaumont Hamill. Yeah, I'm going to show you some trenches first. We we didn't do that last time. We, we didn't, didn't do time. that. It was it was loosely on the itinerary, but that you know that, that extra pint we had at Posier at lunchtime when we all sat outside that oh, put the kibosh um, on that. But. Yes, but we did enjoy that extra pint in mm. Posier. We We've did. got some extra time to play with, haven't we? Because we aren't going out to Cambrai before we go down to Delta yeah. Wood and the 16 stuff. Okay, well, look, let, let's let's start with uh, 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 Beaumont Hamill, then, if you want. That's... So it's the largest preserved bit of battlefield, I think, on the Western Front, at least in the British sector. Probably bigger bits at Verdun, to be honest. But um, it's sort of run by the Canadians now. It's where the Newfoundland just took a... Took a, they, a they got wiped out nearly, didn't they? Pretty much. So it's all run by them, although it's slightly over -emphasis. You know, you you don't know that they were third over on the day, for example, and there were a load of British units who went before them and stuff. But what makes it quite unique is it's all the trenches are still there in situ, not just the front line, the communication trenches, 
and the support trenches. And then you get you sort of walk right down to the other end, and then you've got the German trenches as well. So it's it's um, you know quite a significant first day first <coughs> July type um, battlefield. It's probably a good way for people who have not been as well before to get a sort of grounding, and it's quite good to see you know first timers to see actual trenches and things like that. So I think we'll be starting there. That's the plan. I'm I'm loving that because as I said, uh, you know, we didn't really we didn't do that last time. Uh, uh, do we then go to Delver Wood after that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So right. I I think Delver Wood would be me again. Um, because I, I love that story. Well, I don't obviously love Delver Wood and the fact that so many people are still dead in there, but I love telling that story. Um, and it mm. there's so many Chelsea fans in there as well. It gets kind of commandeered by the South Africans because it's such a shit show for them. But there's so many other units that get Put through it as well and then is this this is where the football memorial is isn't it uh yeah it's that's all sort of a, around the same place um and then that's where we've got a couple of family things to do so i was like it's a it is still like a good intro for people like we gave you last time but it's substantially mm -hmm. different so that like you and tony and like if pete and lisa came again then they wouldn't be bored um but then we're stick with the 16 stuff and it's back to homes again. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think I was a bit lucky. Well, obviously, I was very lucky that you took me to Combray, which I didn't know you were going to do. Um, and I think I was lucky in the fact it was the first place we went to. So nobody was bored by me being wonderfully self-indulgent. You know, I think I got away with it there. Uh, but Delville Wood was, was amazing. I mean, it, it's actually, I know this might sound odd. I mean, I've seen pictures of Delville Wood you know, archive footage of it. And it, 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 it looks like the worst bit of Passchendaele, if you remember, you know, it's just it's just mud and st tree stumps. And now it's this, it, I, I thought it was quite a beautiful place. I mean, it was, uh, it was a beautiful sunny day when we went. Lots mm. of grass to sit down on and lie down on. And it was, there was something quite, I, I felt there was something quite serene about Delville Wood. And I thought that their cemetery was was very moving too. It was just really, it was a really oddly peaceful place. Am I barking up the wrong tree here, Holmes? No, that's that's the one. I mean, um, it, it, you're right. I mean, if you look at photos from the time, there's it's smashed a bit. It's nothing's higher than a few feet. The trees that are left, and you know, in some ways, you think you might get more cover fighting in a wood, but in some ways, it's worse because actually, you get bits of timber flying around amongst the shell splinters, and it's really hard to dig trenches deep because of the roots and stuff that are everywhere. So it's not, you know, it's not that great either. And also, it offers, you know, offers the enemy quite a bit of cover as well. Well, there's still some of that there. You yeah, just end definitely. up with everybody staggering around and everyone's artillery shelling their own people because nobody knows where everyone is inside. And I just I, I'm talking like people out there will know what it is. So Delville Wood, it, it, we run up against it in mid-July and have to get through it. And it's attached to a little village called Longerval. Um, and then basically it takes from until the beginning of September, really, to get out the other side. And there are just thousands upon thousands of people put through this place. And I mentioned the South Africans because they um, they go in. It's their first big thing on the Western Front. They've had some stuff going on in German South West Africa, but it's their first big deal on the Western Front. And they go in with 3,300 odd men and 700 march out four days later. So and then our guys go in, our Chelsea fans. So. So, I mean, you know, other, other, I mean, I know the football, going, looking back at this thing again, the footballer memorial, it's actually, it's it's the footballer's battalion, isn't it? it? It's the generic kind of memorial to all of the footballers who fought and died there. It's not necessarily related to Delville, is it? No, it's related to, Johnny, do you want to talk about the 17th Middlesex and how it all came about opposite Stamford Bridge? Yeah, it's, um, it was, uh, it said revising, um, it was for Fulham Town Hall um, and you would, you were sort of invited. They basically invited b b fans to sign up, so you could you could fight alongside players. Um, and the football's battalion. I mean, I was reading. I was reading over Land and Sea this afternoon. Funnily <laughs> enough, available at all good booksellers, including Amazon. Um, and just you know, the, the number of different clubs who, who contributed players. I think we initially put nine in from memory. Um, and yeah, the premise was was you know if you're a fan, you you sign up and you fight alongside alongside the players. Um, and whether I mean we can probably go into this uh, while we're down there, but the, the the premise of the pressure on footballers to sign up, um, I think I think the 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 opposite argument was was racing at the time, from what I can remember reading in um, in Overland and Sea. But there was just such a huge pressure on footballers to sign up. But these were guys who, you know, probably just got a professional contract. 
weren't entirely sure, you know, how they were going to keep their family if they they signed up. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fascinating story and one which obviously we need a bit more revision on before we go. I mean, it's um, mainly mainly sort of you know rugby and cricket which stopped that were a bit sniffy mm. towards football, well, and then horse racing which didn't stop yet wanted the moral high ground. Which yeah, was, but obviously those yeah. you know your, your, your cricketers and your rugby players weren't professional sportsmen. They were sort of lawyers and bankers and the like. Yeah. You know, it didn't they needed they didn't need the money sort of thing. Um, so if you go on my Substack, I actually put a section of the book up there um, this week for free, and it explains why it's okay that not every professional footballer raced off and enlisted in 1914, and and basically they're on a contract. They signed a year at a time. Uh, at the time, married men, most professional footballers statistically were married men with families, were not expected to enlist. Mm -hmm. And actually, mm -hmm. the, com the country couldn't deal with any more recruits. You've got people, the players doing rifle drill at Chelsea are learning more than the guys sitting in a field in the Norfolk regiment sharing a plate and a spoon between eight of them with no rifles. So they can process anybody else. So... Interesting. Yeah. Um, we've, done, so, we've had a well, couple of questions about that. Well, yeah, go on, man. Go on, go on. Interesting what, what, what Johnny was saying is that Fulham Town Hall, where the, you know, the players would come and sign up with, with the player. That sounds like a, a, a kind of modern day piece of um, evil marketing. You know, they had a meeting. They were so fed up with being slated that they invited clubs down, and it was mostly southern clubs that turned up at this meeting. Um, and they basically invited players down and the clubs themselves went and the FA were there and they kind of resolved to do this footballers battalion and then guys started standing up and I think so as as well as Chelsea the other big contributor in terms of the amount of fans is Clapton Orient so Leighton Orient mm. I'm pretty sure it was one of the homes you'll remember it was one of their players that stood yeah. up first and said oh go damn it uh, I, yeah I can't remember his name but I think you're right I think they had a slightly bigger contribution than us I mean it was was very much a southern thing. I think as the war went on, you know, it it, it crept further and further north, sort of thing. Um, the so other by one the is time, in by the time Central you got Town. the attack on Gillimont in in August nineteen sixteen, you know, there's Oscar Links and a Man United player who died, and William Gerrish, a Villa player who died there on TFL Memorial. Um, so it did creep up, but footballers also joined up other units as well. They didn't all go to the footballers battalion, but I think. You know, given the audience, I think it's important that we acknowledge that, that there was one Liverpool player who joined the Footballers' Battalion. And I think it's also important that we make it clear that um, whilst he was serving with the Footballers' Battalion, he wasn't allowed to play football for them because he was banned for match-fixing by the FA. <laughs> <laughs> you sure he wasn't an Arsenal player? <laughs> they got relegated, didn't they, that season because of their match-fixing? I think so. It's to do with the game against Man United the, the, uh, to, uh, the season before. Which so brilliantly, based on the league table, we should have been relegated, but Liverpool went down because they cheated. And also, Liverpool were in the FA. They won the FA Cup, I think, in 1913, or they won it the year before we were in the Khaki Cup final against Sheffield United. So whenever the Liverpool fans say, "You ain't got no history," you say, "Well, we, you know, we were in the FA Cup final the year the year after the first time you were in it. You great big plunkers, you know." So there we go. Listen, I've got a couple of uh, that was being polite. Um, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions here from Mixler. The uh, we we don't forget you people on Mixler, you know, just because we're all on the fancy technical YouTube shambles that I make it. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the lovely David Lotzer, who says Alex is so lovely. She sent me an extra book a few years back that my grandpa has now. I don't remember. I know. But yay. <laughs> yay! You're lovely. You are genuinely lovely, aren't you? This is the thing. Uh, and Matt Young, who is supposed to be coming, I believe, isn't he? He is. He's coming all the way from Dubai. Exactly. Well, that would be why he's asked this question. Can anybody tell me how we will travel to the continent? Well, you're yeah, coming. Matt, I'm, I'm aware it's because you need to sort your rental car out. Yeah. Give me a, a couple more days until I see where everybody's from, and then I'll, I'll be able to tell you. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go on that funny Eurostar thing, aren't we? But you put the car. Yeah, on. Yeah, but there. it's to do with him renting a car for the rest of the time he's in the UK and where and when he's going to give it back. Yeah. I've got a question for you because I can't remember the answer to this. Uh, did we go before or after Brexit? Before, uh, after. Was it Sorry, after? It, it was definitely after. It was twenty eighteen. Was it? June or July? Yeah. Twenty nineteen. It was, June. Was it it but it was before the official. All right. Um, Brexit, okay. but after the vote. <laughs> Because I do remember distinctly making sure that my Irish passport was uh, proudly on display. Indeed. So that uh, 
if they if anybody had to go and get their passport stamped in France, they wouldn't. Yes, that's right, because you are Tony Oglover. I am. Now, I, indeed, I'm going to choose a few big ticketish items. I mean, I know we go to Guillemont Road Cemetery, which is a tiny cemetery, isn't it, uh, Holmes? Yeah, I mean, we'll do that, and we can just talk through the footballs battalion, the attack on Guillemont. Guillemont's quite interesting in, you know, it took from something like the 14th of July to the 3rd of September to capture Guillemont. I think there was four or five attempts by the British, and by the you know by the end of it. Gilliman was just really literally like a moonscape and the Germans had tunneled, you know, they dug down in what connected wells and cellars and tunnels and stuff. So it's really hard to attack. So we'll talk through the footballers battalion attack on that at the beginning of August. Um, there's some other interesting people in that cemetery. You've got Raymond Asquith, who was a son of the then, the then prime minister, Herbert Asquith. There's also a bloke I've found since actually called Lieutenant Baumby. Um, and he was responsible for setting Everton up in Chile. So there is an Everton in Chile. There is, and he, was, he was an expat who was working in Chile. And I think Everton and Tottenham, although I hate to say it, did a tour of South America. That was quite a thing back in those days before the war. And he was in, so inspired by Everton, he set up Everton in Chile. And they've got on and they've won the league once and stuff. So that's quite an interesting story. Lovely. There is. Yeah, there's a there's a lovely lot of info, isn't there, about, uh, you know, the British and, and how he took football to the to South America. Right. Uh, I think that, you know, a couple of big, what I would call big ticket items. Uh, and, and one is, one is this wonderful, amazing place, which we had a lovely time at last time, which of course is Vimy Ridge. Uh, and the thing that, I mean, I, I know one of you just leap in, tell us all about Vimy Ridge. The thing I do take away though, which is a bit macabre and silly, because it's kind of me really, isn't it? Uh, macabre and silly, uh, is the exploding sheep, Johnny. You know what? I saw. I saw this. I saw this on on the on the itinerary. I have never heard of this before. You've not heard of that. I pr pray someone tell me about what, the what, what kind of masters did you get? Basically, yeah. it's not some <laughs> form of special. It's not some form of special weapon, but to keep the grass cut, keep the grass cut at Vimy Ridge. In theory, because there's so many live <laughs> munitions still there. They use sheep instead of lawnmowers. <laughs> there, there it is. There's no some sort of hidden super weapon that we've just discovered or something like that. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes the sheep uh, uh, chew on the wrong bit of grass. I'm, le I'm leaving it there. All right. Um, uh, tell we, us about we, the we, memorial, we, Alex, as well. Yeah. I'll let Johnny tell you about 17, but just to say that I give you all fair warning that since we went last time, I now speak and read enough French to be able to bore you with them. The other memorial, remember the one we looked at, the Moroccans? Mm. Yes. The French mm. were there before us, uh, before we took it over. But Johnny's going to be covering 17. Johnny? Yep. Reading that soon. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the guy we, we're going to be talking about um, is a chap called Bob Whiting, um, who was a goalkeeper. His nickname was Pom Pom, and he was, he was named after a, a rapid-firing naval gun due to his... his kicky and fierce punching ability. He could um, kick it out the stadium, couldn't he? Yeah, he, he could launch he could launch a ball. Um and that's when they weighed half a stone. Yeah. And yeah. he was he was quite a, for for the for the time he was actually quite a big chap. I think he was kind of sort of six two and twelve stone, which if you kind of look at service records and, and censuses for, for that time, that's quite large. Um, he played for, for Thames Iron Mere slip of a man, Johnny. What are you talking about? I would about? say <laughs> you barely see him. Um, played for Thames Iron Works, moved to Chelsea, and then he moved on to Brighton, where I think he made over 300 appearances. Um, he did, he doesn't take part in, in the Battle of the Somme. He, he joins up with the 17th Middlesex, but he doesn't take part in the Battle of the Somme because he can track scabies. Um, he gets sent home and basically goes AWOL, and he's he's missing for kind of a good sort of three or four months. Um, gets caught by, by a police officer and court-martialed um, back in France. And uh, gets sent sentences of nine months of hard labour, which which gets suspended. It gets kind of pushed back in, and he ends up um, fighting in the in the Battle of Arras. Um, he, I think, he ends up sort of towards the end the end of April. Uh, is it the Battle Alex? You'll have to help me here. The Battle of Arleur, possibly somewhere. Is it not Oppy somewhere around? Oppy, it yeah, is Oppy, 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 yeah. Um, she and, says and she knows what that means. That's what I have a gym <laughs> for. Yeah, and and yeah, he 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 basically gets gets wounded, wounded and and 
and killed. But it's it's kind of quite tragic in the sense that because of the court martial, rumor goes round that he has been that he he I think rumor. Hold on, hold on. He said, "I did make some notes." Um, rumors that he was he was shot as a deserter, um, which obviously for his widow was probably quite distressing um and i think she ends up putting did she put a statement out through brighton that that wasn't yeah. the case but um, he'd left us by and he racked up yeah. more than 300 appearances for brighton and brighton were absolutely lovely when we were putting the book together okay um but yeah he's he's commemorating the Arras memorial um so we'll go and see him but yeah he's he's quite a, a professor we could talk more about the battle of Arras and and what happened there because it's kind of the first it's it's the first big post Somme set piece battle where we've supposedly kind of learned lessons and it, it sort of it starts quite well but descends into to more chaos and carnage and I can't remember how many of the seventeenth Middlesex lost there but it was it's another massive hammering isn't it fairly yeah fairly substantial hammering indeed and uh, just just because people might not believe us here's a picture of uh, Johnny uh, doing his bit as a as a as a battlefield tour guide. There we go. Uh, <laughs> with a very a dark... And that's yeah. Glover holding a picture of Bob Whiting. Glover he... looking like he's about to he's... Glover looks like he's holding a fart in. <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> yeah, and the one that he's terrified he's gonna follow through. Yeah. 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 What's that's, he that's... holding up there? That's Bob a, I think that's a picture of Bob Whiting. Yeah. Okay, so where was that? Where did we where did we do that? That's the Aras Memorial. That's mm. the Aras Memorial. How well, we can appropriate. Obviously have a quick mention of uh, Walter Tolwa we're there as well he's on the Arras Memorial as well it, uh, that's where he is is it because mm -hmm. he was the uh, first well he was the black guy wasn't he I don't he? know if he's the very first black officer is he not it's definitely one of the first two yeah. is that Holmes you remember more of I, I think there's, there's a slight bone of contention I think there might be a, a sort of Anglo West Indian artillery officer who might have been the first one, but oh, would um, it be Norman Manley? Did he get promoted? No, this is how rare it is to find a black person. We know them all by name. But I think it might be that Tall was the first person to put sort of black down as, as his ethnicity on the yeah on the commission form. Whereas I think the West Indian guy might have put Anglo West Indian or something like There's that. There's definitely some wanker out there going, well, I Actually, if you say he's the first, but I mean, <laughs> you're splitting hairs. He, yeah, 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 indeed. BBC did a marvel. Uh, they did a program. Uh, I think it was a drama or something about him, um, and it was really moving because it didn't he? What the time, didn't he die? Literally at the last part of the war, or very close to the end of it. Italy, isn't it? He he went to Italy. Did he die in Italy? I doubt it if he's on the Arras Memorial. He's a show <laughs> <laughs> and Holmes didn't Less, need to look up Wikipedia for that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah. There's a twinning Sorry. thing going on that we've forgotten about. Is yeah. he? He definitely. So he would have been it's, in Italy at the end of 17. So he's. He goes back for the spring offensive, isn't he? Yeah, I think it must so. Be. Mm. Yeah. Um, I know. I know. We. Uh, we. I mean, you, if you want to talk about anything about these three places that we visited last time, which is Nerve Chapelle, which I remember for the Indian Indians that fought there, La Toure, and the Battle of the Boar's Head. Anybody want to like quickly mention what those three were about? Well, I'll quickly just say that the Boar's Head is the day that Sussex died. For there, when we'll talk about it on the trip, but there is a specific reason why there are a another pile of Chelsea fans in the Sus certain Sussex battalions. Um, and this battle had not, it, it wasn't even in the official history. We had to start from absolute scratch because what it is, is this little thing that happens the day before the 1st of July, 1916, further north as kind of a distraction. And it really doesn't even get a mention in the uh, official history of the First World Wars. So we had to start from scratch. We talk about that and about why we've... Uh, got so many people but it, it just it's a little bit if if you know then you get moved every time brighton play at home and you hear them play sussex by the sea because that was their song as well but johnny again is gonna johnny's gonna do the some of the 15 stuff as we head further north and he's gonna be doing festa bear mm, okay excellent stuff i mean you know we should we should mention uh arras which we will in a minute but uh I think for me, one of the most important places to visit was was actually this place, Teepval. 
Oh. Well, they've got this amazing. I mean, you remember that? You remember that, Tony? We, we I, were, I, 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 Tony and I, I hung out that. for most of this trip, well, didn't we? And I remember yeah, and how moved we were by that. Uh, uh, when, you know, when you see them, when you see when you first get there and you see the the, the monument of Vimy Ridge and this, they just knock you sideways. It's just, it's just jaw dropping. And um, I just remember thinking, I mean, that 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 is the one that sticks in my memory the most. This one, uh, 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 it's just. Awesome, and I I, I I can't think of an appropriate description for it other than, you know, it is absolutely stunning. I mean, there's um, a, I mean, Holmes, you're good on this. There's a reason that it has that effect. I mean, like down to where they stuck it. I mean, it's supposed to make you feel that way, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to dominate the sort of the, the sort of the the high ground from the Somme, so you can see it from everywhere. But I mean, it's yeah. got it's got the names of almost seventy three thousand casualties on. So that. They're, and that's not even everyone who died in the Battle of the Somme who hasn't got a known grave. That's everyone who died in the Battle of the Somme who hasn't got a known grave up to something like March 18, because then it carries on, uh, you know, a few miles away around in a wall around a cemetery at, at Pozier. Um, but I mean, there's some, you know, there's there's a Chelsea player, Norman Wood, who's on there. It's probably our favourite supporter, William Goddard. Um, oh, he's on there. He's, he's a, he, we will toast him. He's quite good. You've also got the uh, Percy Jeeves, who was the cricketer who inspired Jeeves and Worcester. Um, really? Yeah. Oh. And then you've got, uh, he's on the front bit, of, uh, the other side of the back bit we can see there. And there's also another guy called Lee Richmond Ruse, who was a a Welsh Welsh international. He played for Villa. He did it as a gentleman. He said, just pay my expenses. And they were like, fine. And then he would turn up at um, Houston and hire a train to take himself up to Villa so he could play the football sort of stuff. And he used to date film stars and stuff of the day. But but the most important thing about him was um while he was playing, you goalkeepers used to be able to bounce the ball like basketball players up the pitch. Most didn't do it because they were a bit clumsy, the ball was a bit heavy, the pitch was a bit muddy. If you lose the ball, you look stupid. He was really good at it to the, hit the point he was so good they brought in the rule that you could only handle the ball in the area. So he's another interesting character. Mm. Mm. Okay. It really is I, I, for me. I, honestly, that was one of the one of the many highlights, but it was one of the highlights of the trip for me, Tiva. And Tony, it's nice to hear Tony concurring on that. We spent the first night in in Aris, didn't we, Alex? Which is uh, an interesting place. I quite liked Aris, actually. It is, um, and actually, we are. So we're not. Luckily, the hotel that we stayed in has died and been replaced by a much, much nicer hotel. Ooh, like it, was a bit, it was a bit. Yeah, it was a bit. Yeah, and we didn't mind because we were only there for one night. But um, I don't think I've told you yet. We have to do two nights here and one at the Ariane because oh, no, there's a bloody no. rally thing going on, and Eat is stacked on the Saturday, so they've squidged no. us in on the Sunday. But yeah, so I but we're at, um, it's a Mercure at Aris, so it's nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, do you know, listen, I do you know, I like, weirdly, I mean, I I really liked Aras. I loved that. You did. I love that time. restaurant that me and Tony found where we drank uh, Wellington. Was it Waterloo? Did we meet our Waterloo? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It was the it was the mystery beer. It's going to be well, Waterloo. The, the, the beer yeah, mysterious, wasn't we it? We have regaled them with this story before, but it was the fact that between us, uh, my French has actually got quite hopefully a lot better since then. But between Mine's us, no had, better, Tony. I trust. We had a reasonable you. amount of French between us, so we went and sat there and uh, found out found out this restaurant, and we sat down. And I think Alex had gone off on some sort of secret trip down some tunnels or something. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. Um, and so we sat there and we said, oh, well, you know, two, two grand beer mysteria. And they came out with this stuff. And we drank that. And we thought, this is that's nice. And we'd had a long day. And we ordered the food. And then I think it was Pete and Lisa and... Uh, a few others spotted us and said, oh, you know, do you mind if we join them? Yeah, no, not at all, like, you know. But by this time, we were on our third pint of this stuff. And <laughs> it, on the way to being what I would describe as socially relaxed. And um, uh, and so we, we, we okay. and it was only when I looked it up, I'm sure it was Wellington, uh, this stuff was like 7.8%. And, and it was it was brilliant. It was just a brilliant, brilliant night. And, and Aris... The, the, the centre there in that square is just yeah. like it's typically you could not be in any other country other than France because if you've ever been to any of these uh, town squares whatever you want to call them they are all very very similar and it was it is just absolutely brilliant and we went for breakfast the next morning remember Chich 
We did. And we, we did. found that little um, boulangerie where we went we in and sat down and walked around. There was a market there the next day yeah. where I think I'm convinced I saw Jurgen Klopp on in his Saturday um, trans outfit um, at one of the stalls. <laughs> <laughs> it was dress you. I, I know I'm getting in trouble here, but he, she, they, them <laughs> were was dressed. It was just Johnny. It was it, honestly. It, it was imagine this really elegant sort of outfit, dress, and and, and everything like that, and you know, makeup and whatever. And then you sort of you think, oh, blimey, she's very glamorous. And she turns around, and it's Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> right. It's Jurgen Klopp's face and everything. Okay. Now, if that wasn't an instant. Um, moment of flaccidness. Well, I don't know what would be, but you know, it was, it was just that's a that's a powerful image. Tony, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, also, does that mean you were, you were walking around a rat up to that point in a state of arousement? Um, <laughs> well, it was a lovely place, <laughs> yeah, it was very nice, yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, considering it, it he was takes, my roommate for the trip, I'm a bit worried it? about that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I loved Aris. It was just so. No, I, I did too, mate. It was. At a, I liked the vibe there. You know, yeah. I really did. And and you're right. The market in the morning the next day was great fun, wasn't it? I really enjoyed yeah. that. So just as well we're sp- spending two nights there and not in the fucking lovely Ariane and Eve. Oh, you know, yeah. really, it's isn't very it? Very apologetic, know? but that weekend is amazing. Oh, man, shit happens. Shit happens. We'll have a nice. Yeah. Like, is it? Is it we're staying in in Eve on the Sunday night then. We are. Yeah. So we have a lot, last great big hoolie on the Sunday night then. Mm. So nice oh, to yeah. meet. Oh, we'll have to, we, we'll do the, um, we'll get to that in part two. I'll tell you what, let's have a quick break and then uh, we'll come back and we will actually start talking a lot more about Eep and what goes on uh, around oh, there, of course. Get this cat away from me. He's driving yeah, me. Leave, leave your cat and it's, and it's bye bum. Bye, on, leave, it, leave it alone. Leave it alone. We'll see you in a minute. Fans, real opinions. I'm Jason Cundy, and you're listening to the Chelsea Football Fancast. Proper Chelsea. Footballfancast.com. There we go. Welcome back. This is the, this is the Chelsea Fancast, the big push, because we're talking not about football. We're talking about World War One, and in particular. The uh, the battlefields around the Somme and Eep, and I am Stamford Chidge, and I'm joined by the ever so lovely Alex Churchill. Hello. The uh, just in the nick of time Tony Glover. Good evening. Tap free. Uh, the PhD wanker off for another beer, no doubt. Yes, there we go on cue. I like that. That that's good TV, Johnny. Well, well segue. Other beers like are available though, right? Other beers Tummy, are available. Yeah, yeah, obviously not advertising San Miguel because it's all I can get my hands on. Yeah, <laughs> and there we go. Uh, and uh, and last but by no means least, the fantastic Mr. Holmes. Hello, I, I'm not. I'm not drinking. Is this why I'm going last? Am I? No, no, nor am I, mate. I've been. I've been on the coffee because the thing is, I've got a fridge next to me stacked with the scrumpy that I made a couple of years ago, and I and it's a, they're in liter bottles. And if I drink a, a liter of this during a show, I'm I'm literally on the floor at the end of it, and it all goes very shambolic. <laughs> So I've, I've learned to lay off it. It's a bit too dangerous, but there you go. Right, we were telling you all about the Somme in part, uh, well, the first part of our World War I tour uh, chat. Uh, it's kind of now time to move on to Eep, which was a, a very... Uh, do you want, who, who wants to put Eep in... Alex, do you want to put Eep into context in terms of the battles and things? Or the uh, war, really? I feel like Johnny hasn't done a lot of talking. Like, let's give it... Like, and I, I feel like the talking he has here. done put something at him that he doesn't remember. So. Yeah, yeah, I was saying, uh, this is on the hoof. Um, Eep, Eep is really important in the sense that it, it sits between um, the, the two sides and the sea. Ultimately, that, that, that is what, what the goal is originally, is for both, both sides to try and get to the sea and, and gain control of the channel ports. Um, first Battle of Eep is ooh, end 1914, is it October? Second, in 1915, um, notable, I mean, we can talk about this when we're out there, it's notable for the first use of gas on the um, as, as, a, as a weapon of war, which is, is quite a fascinating part of the development of war and how, how it affects both the participants and society in general. Um, third EAP is what we'll be mostly concentrating on um, because it is 
it, it's it's kind of pivotal to to the Great War itself. Um, there are several battles which take place over the course uh, from thirty uh, first of July to uh, early November. Um, it, it kind of for me it kind of encapsulates how the Great War develops. Obviously, there there are there are Chelsea players and fans involved that we can talk about, but it encapsulates how the Great War develops um, and how it moves from kind of coming out of, of of the trenches and this sort of static warfare that we're all kind of really familiar with, and kind of what encapsulates popular memory of memory of the Great War, and to moving on and getting out of the trenches to becoming a very different type of warfare, which I think is not really not really talked about a great deal. Um, yeah, I, it's 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 a, it's a pivotal point on the Western Front, um, the importance of which you can point out in any number of different ways, which which we will do while we are there. Um, but yeah, and a, and just a, a fascinating place to go. I mean, Holmes first dragged me out there, getting on twenty years ago. In the first instance, I've never actually been to bed sober while while I've been there, which I think is a critical point to point out. Um, but on on a more serious note, I think in, in the the number of times we've been there over the years, you can kind of you you never have to tell the same story twice. There are so many things to see and so much to talk about. Um, it's that in, it's that important to site on the Western Front. That's this is the reason why if if, if we're, we're doing the sales pitch and saying come on come on the tour, come because you'll see Eep and you you will you will understand more about the Great War. An awful lot of of popular myth and popular memory is is kind of all the stuff, all the cliched stuff about lions led by donkeys and they're in trenches for four years and nothing much happens. Eep is where you can tell the story of why that is not true. It's it's such an important spot and it's such a fascinating spot and that's why I think you should come along. Well, it I mean, is, I think the other thing as well is that that's mainly much. where you know the Brits were for most of the war. You know they didn't. Get down to the Somme until 1915. <clears throat> in fact, you know, the <clears throat> Christmas 1914, the French basically were in charge of most of it, and we held a little bit down to the south. But after that, from 15 onwards, you know, that was sort of our area down to sort of Neuve Chapelle. And then we expanded down a bit further and further. So it's where the Brits were for most of the war. Yeah. And the Aussies and the Canadians. and the, the Well, we forgot to say that about Vimy, didn't we? That, uh, you know, but Vimy was very much uh, a Canadian thing, wasn't it? As I recall, yeah, it was. I think it was the first. Alex, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's the first time the Canadian Canadian division fought on its own, and it captured that ridge on it's Easter Day, time, 1917, yeah. in yeah. the snow. And the memorial that you see there is, you know, despite the really striking design of it and the sculptures around it and in the middle of it. I don't know if you looked around the edge last time. If you look around the edge, there's loads of names carved into it, a bit like the Menin Gate. And they're there for every Canadian that hasn't got a grave on the Western Front. So with I mean, the um, Canadians, it was the first time. So it's kind of like, until that point, Canada doesn't really have a national identity. And then they go into this battle and a victorious, led by an Englishman, an old Etonian. But um, the first time that all the provinces fight together, like, it's a unifying thing for Canada. It's like their birth of it's like their birth, birth of, nation. of a nation. It's like yeah. the Australians and Gallipoli. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fought elsewhere as well. Yeah, yeah. Kind Excellent. of one of one of the most impressive victories on the Western Front as well, I think, personally. Yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing is, you know, because uh, people who, who've who listened to me waffling on for years will, will know this. I, I literally have, well, certainly when it comes to football and, you know, my, my own whereabouts, I have the memory of a goldfish. And yet this trip was what, 2018? That's six years ago. And I remember, I remember so much of this. I mean, funnily enough, we're about to do a lot of these with the eat part of the tour. And I've got the list of places that I, I thought we might talk about down here. And I remember every one of these so vividly, uh, less so the, the bits in the Somme, funnily enough. But I mean, Hill 60, of course, which was mm. which was just great fun, wasn't it? I mean, Alex, you want to want to give us a little bit about Hill 60? Is that where Tony was digging for rabbits or pretending to be a rabbit? <laughs> yeah. So Hill 60 is, is around the Eep area, but it's 1915. And we may or may not have convinced Tony that the British Army was using rabbits to dig trenches. Well, was it triple functioning rabbits? Because then we then skinned them and kept warm 
with the skins and ate them. Um, and some and like that's funny enough, but at the point where we had convinced him to get down on his knees and do an impression of a rabbit digging a trench was when I, I couldn't hold my shit together anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I can only say that they caught me all these people on this particular fan cast right now. They all caught me at what I would best describe myself as being slightly vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the way they used to um Describe Jeffrey Bernard. I was unwell. Okay. <laughs> was um, that the night after we got hammered? Then <laughs> it was indeed. It was indeed, and um, I seem to remember because I do remember that one vividly. Because um, uh, wasn't that where the crater was as well? Yeah. yeah, we had more of a job convincing you that we made it up than we did initially convincing you mm. that it was true. You weren't having yeah. it. No, you weren't. I, 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 my recollection of that is. Number one, uh, well, I got a, you know, it, it was funny enough for them to um, to present me with a a, a Le Chouf beer glass at the end of it for being such a good sport. They did, didn't they? I think. They and, did make um, you look like a complete hit. I did, <laughs> but I, you know, like I said, I was uh, I would describe myself as being vulnerable and um, uh, and 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 unwell that morning. You know, we can't do it again now because we've told everyone about it. We're going to have to switch no. animals and replace it with a capybara or something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We'll come up with something. We'll come uh, up with something. Well, you must do. You must do because it was hilarious. One of the high points of the tour. It was I great fun. Tony a lot at Langemark as well. You did. Well, yeah. we'll talk. Well, let's talk about Langemark now because that was. I, what, what I loved about, I mean, for, for people who don't know, uh, Langemark is a very big uh, German uh, cemetery and. You know, having basically we trawl around a lot of uh, Commonwealth War Graves uh, Commission uh, cemeteries, which are all you know very uniform. You wouldn't be surprised to hear, you know, the kind of the. Uh, I, I mean, what, what are the what are the gravestones actually made out of? Is, is it anybody well, knows? There's forty different types, but it's generally Portland stone. But yeah, I mean, they're very wide, aren't they? That's the point, you know. Whereas whereas the German ones, they don't have anything like that. They have these funny little crosses, and it's it's all very black. It all it seems quite stark, and then they have these mass graves, don't they, where they don't bury people individually with all the names on them. It was I I was really moved by the German cemetery. It's I got yeah, it's, it's a mix of reasons. One of it is money because they're not Commonwealth war graves. We're paying for all that. That's, yeah. tax, that's taxpayer funded. In Germany, it's not. It's a charity. Yeah. Um, so there's that, and there's also what the French and Belgians were very happy to give us all the land we wanted for our cemetery. Yeah. It's not so much yeah. with the Germans, and also yeah, well, as well, they just have culturally a completely different vibe on death. Like they're not they're not interested in the one grave for every person and obsessing about where everyone was buried. Or that's how it feels on our side, yeah. anyway. Um, and and neither are the French, to be fair. Yeah, all these stupid rumours about them boiling down bodies to make no, soap. You, you said that crap, time, but... I, remember, I remember that was one of the things you said at the time. Was it was it was a different outlook on 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 death, you know, and a far more like a pragmatic way of looking at it, I suppose, than than, than the way we would normally. I mean, there's it, still know. respect. They still want yeah. to bury their dead and that, but there's it's just I, I the Victor we still are very Victorian. I think in. Mm our approach to how we're quite over the top about it they're not hmm i yeah as i said very oh, good. yeah i mean there, there was that, there was that I, I, I mean we, we should talk about well no no well actually let's talk about it because i saw this on a documentary recently actually and it made me think of it but um hitler of course made a big thing of uh, protecting the German cemeteries, didn't he, in the Second World War, whereas they wrecked pretty much everything else within their path. You know, all cemeteries. He he was hands off all allied really? as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, he, fought, uh, he's, he fought. He's and uh, there's that legend, isn't there? So I mean I'll show you the 14th Division Memorial while we're over mm. there. And there's a little memorial over it nearby it to Australians that's got some damage to it. And the urban legend, I don't know if it's true, is that the Germans who shot it up in World War Two were executed because of yeah. Hitler's mandate um on leaving war stuff alone. They were just yeah. told hands off everything. Yeah, indeed. Um one of the most fascinating places uh that we visited, uh for odd odd and peculiar reasons, uh, not least the great little cafe there and the museum. Yeah. 
and uh, and the and the lo- lovely bloke who runs it, actually, who I know these guys will tell me who it is in a minute because I can't remember his name. Mate, but was... he's not the draw anymore. His kids have taken over. They've got oh, like, really a YouTube channel. The boys have <laughs> like they are really accounts, they? they've been yeah. cartoonized. They no do way. Like, stuff online. Yeah. But we're talking about Huge, aren't we? So we yeah. have the, we have the it's museum. Nick at Huge. It's a brand. It's on the on the Men in Road, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got huge with the museum and the lovely cafe where we had lunch, but we also had we you you kind of wangled a, a, a trip into this bloke's got a preserved trench system, hasn't he? Or a bit? Uh, of it's it. not. It's I think it's rebuilt. So it's, it's rebuilt. It's, yeah, but it's it's a, basically for school kids to go and look at it and see. You got a bit. You got it. a bit of this action going on though, haven't you? Which I yeah. I thought was very arty photograph by yours truly. If, even if I do say so myself, it looks as though I have the beast in my sights. There, there's a horse. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> in my sights, but there we go. Maybe it was the French who were out there at the time. I don't know, but uh, there we go. Nobody laughed at that uh, Chavo g- uh, gag, but there we go. Never mind. When in France, it was, it yeah, was it was an amazing place, though. Even if it was rebuilt, it got you. It gave you kind of a, a really good sense because it was all. It, it had all the wooden duck bores and all of that going on, and and, and this kind of thing, which is a you know like a, 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 a what do you call it? I mean, it's where you stick your gun, isn't it, to fire at people, basically, and not get shot, not get hurt when they shoot back at you, big metal plate yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think love the just, just, Just to briefly interject, I think uh, Mr. Holmes will be able to correct me. I think that was when we went off into the other side of Sanctuary Wood trying to find bunkers that we yes. couldn't find and then basically got lost and had to ask someone to let us out of their front gate or something. Oh, right. Yeah, we ended up going through someone's back garden, but they weren't there. So in the end, we had to run through like a flower cellar's like field or something like that. And That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a Bloody we hooligans. Saw, Can't take you no, anywhere. We saw no bunkers at all, did we? No. Bloody Proper hooligans. Chaos. Yeah. Uh, and again, I mean, what, if, if anybody knows the history of Eep, one of the most... Uh, I mean, sadly, it's, I don't think this has ever been done as a really good film. Uh, there is a film called Passchendaele, but I think it's a bit pants. Shut yeah, up. It's, yeah, it's pants. Sorry to any Canadians in the room, but yeah. shut up. Yeah, but it's this again, you know, if, if Teepval was uh, was very moving in its own way, Vimy was, but I think this place absolutely takes the biscuit because of the sheer scale of it. Uh, now that photograph's taken from the the big cross in the middle, isn't it? We all kind of go up and stood on it that. It is, but it's also a a bunker that they built that cross on the bunker that That's was right. captured by the Australians in the. Battle. That w- that was the thing they called the Tyne Cot because it's a it's a cottage, isn't it? That was the yeah. idea, wasn't it? Yeah. But that that that's just like one quarter of the cemetery, isn't it? If you think about it, pretty or much. Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah, I mean, most it's just... of those graves are unknown as well. Yeah, I mean, Passchendaele was absolutely hell on earth, wasn't it? And Remind uh, me when we get there this time to tell you about the empty grave and the body snatching, which is Canada again, and yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it's, and remember To be that. fair, it's not as grim as it sounds. It's the guy's dad doing the snatching. So <laughs> Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. We will, we will. Now, the the couple of other things that we did while we were out there, which were very good, and again, I mean, this is the thing, this is the bizarre thing. It, it the whole lot of this is utterly, utterly moving, uh, you know, throughout the whole thing, and yet we still have a lot of fun. More, more of which in a minute. Uh, but I need to go and find this uh, photograph, which I will. But it's it's not just men in gate in in the in the you know not in the centre of Eep. It's on the outskirt, well, on on the edge of the town, if you see what I mean. It's not just the fact that it's an, it's a fascinating monument. It's really, uh, you know, what happens every evening, isn't it? Who, who wants to talk about this one? I, I can do this. So the, the Manning Gate basically has got <clears throat> something like 56,000 names on. And it's a bit like the, it's it's a bit like Tietval on the Somme, not quite as, not quite as big in size. Um, but again, it's got, <clears throat> it's got the names of every Canadian, Australian, Indian, South African that died in the first for the whole of the First World War around Ypres, and then your Brits it only goes up to something like August 1917. So yeah. there's an overspill at the again, which is on a wall at the back of Timecop that's got the rest of the Brits. Um, no New no New Zealanders on it at all because they didn't want to pay for it. So they've got their own memorials um, scattered around the battlefield, sort of thing. But yeah, what you're alluding to is pretty much. Every night, I think it's 1928, buglers who have local firemen come out and play the last post at eight o'clock every night without mm. fail. Um, yeah. Even in the Second World War, 
when Eat was occupied, they managed to sneak <coughs> one at least one fireman over to the UK, and he would play the he would do this once a week at Brookwood Cemetery. So, and then even though when they um, when the Germans were pushed out of Eat in the Second World War, when fighting was still nearby, the firemen came back that night, and they were doing the they were doing the last post within earshot. So it's really moving. I mean, at the moment, it's 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 all being done up at the moment, so it's all covered in scaffold and tarpaulin. But the ceremony still goes on. It goes on over the other side. So if you go through the gate, and the way that they've done the gate is quite well because you can't actually see any of the panels on it or anything. But the tarpaulin, um, they look they made it look like the actual architect's drawings on each side. So it's done quite effectively. So it's a shame mm -hmm. that I think it'll be like that when we go. So you can't actually see the names, mm -hmm. but. It's quite good to see it in this form because you won't see it like this again either. And the ceremony is still going on as well every night. It's a day. long, long project, but if they don't do it, it's going to fall down. So yeah, it's uh, it's still it's incredible. I'm I'm afraid I I shambolically uh, forgot to upload the uh, the f lovely photograph I've got of Meningate, but it it is spectacular. Um, I mean, the other thing about the trip that we should say is that. Uh, you know, we, we mentioned it earlier on, didn't we, that, that you, you lovely people took me to Cambrai to see where my great grandfather, also called David Chigi, uh, was shot as he got out of his tank. Um, and then, of course, you took me to the grave. But I mean, basically, you know, you've got a few people that you're doing some personal stories. So basically, if you've got any relatives that uh, fought or, or and or died out there, you will do what you do very, very well, which is to research it and figure out what happened and, and explain to them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, if we'll do what we can. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's a luck of the draw depending on who they're with and what records are available. You know, mm. half, yeah. half, half the records sort of uh, got destroyed in the Second World War when the um, National Archives was in Hoburn and it was bombed during the Blitz. So, you know, but we'll do what we can. We'll be able to find something out. How did you find out about my, my great granddad then? Because you seem to know an awful lot about what was going on. I mean, you, you and Johnny and uh, and the and Andy all really just knew so much. I was is, I was staggered. Was he an officer? No, no, he was no, a, but he was tank. Private. So it's the there's a lot or a ta finding something that a tank battalion did is is not as hard as trying to narrow someone down in a giant infantry regiment necessarily. Mm. So. The bizarre thing was when I turned up there, it had all, all of this on there. It was a photograph of him and some flowers and stuff. And it was really kept. My, and I have, I mean, I talked to, I've got some relatives, you know, who uh, who I thought it might have been. And it had nothing to do with them. It was all, all rather bizarre. And somebody had actually visited that I'd never heard of. So now in my family, it was, it was some bloody girlfriend or something still, you know, yeah. reprobates. <laughs> I, I think Johnny had gone there the week before. We can reveal uh, that now. It's yeah, all part of the service. I'm Popped in, yeah, you know. Yeah. You, was I, it, it was, was, it was intriguing. Was Sorry, Tony. He was unlucky, wasn't he? Because he survived the tank getting hit, didn't he? And yeah, he got out and then got shot running away from it. I mean, well, we, we always heard he got him. shot by a sniper, and yeah. that was pretty much verified by you chaps, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he got out, the, he got out the tank, didn't he? And um, yeah, yeah, yeah bless him. And, they, and he mean, was buried, buried there, and then dug up, and then buried somewhere else, and then he ended up in the, where that photograph was taken in Oroville. Oroville Wood. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you have got you know relatives who are out there, these guys will try and find out more about well, them. I'm going to have a, a couple, I think, that are going to come from from uh, my mother-in-law. I think she's she's got some relatives that go back. I, I've my family tree is a bit odd. Um, I need to go back through it and see if there's anybody there. I mean, my granddad must have. You better hurry up, Tom. We're going soon. Yeah, I know. Oh, you do a Lisa on us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I, by I, the I, way. I, I certainly know that my, my mother-in-law's, I'm sure it's his uncle or uncle or something like that. Um, and you, I, I got the details too late for the last trip. So I will I'll, I'll dig around and, and find out if she wants me to see if there's anything that we can do for her on that one. Well, indeed. Um, I, I found out I had another relative who was mentioned in dispatches. Uh, I think because my dad died recently, we, we got hold of all these old things, as you do, from his relatives. And... Uh, Mum doesn't want them kicking around, so she said, "Oh, do you want these?" So it was his commission uh, letter, and uh, and as I said, he was uh, he was mentioned in dispatches. This is my this would have been my paternal grandmother's uh, side. I think her father 
And uh, you reckon it was in Palestine, don't you, uh, Alex? So we can't really do much about that because Palestine's a long way away from the Somme, but never mind. Yeah, I mean, that could it could be anywhere up into Israel, but yeah, I'm not... It was sure. Allenby, wasn't it? Was Allen... soon, yeah, so... It was, it was Allenby, I think, wasn't it? Who, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there we go. There we go. Just to pitch that one in there for future reference, chaps. You know, no hurry, obviously, <laughs> you know. Um, now, listen, apart from all this wonderful history and, uh, you know, it is a bit emotional and moving. I will not lie. Some of these places genuinely move you when you think that the I mean, the, the these these very young men usually, you know, sacrificing themselves like lambs led to the slaughter. It is, you know, it's poignant, but it's not uh, all about that. We actually have a fantastic time, don't we? Because we kind of like a drink because we are all I include you in this, Alex, you does alcoholic yadars uh, that support Chelsea and we do like to have a drink and uh, as we said earlier on Aris is fantastic Eep is uh, you know I love Deep. it's a beautiful mm. place the fact they they rebuilt the cloth hall which was completely destroyed in the war and it's they literally brick by brick rebuilt it haven't they and it looks exactly like you would have thought it would have looked then uh, and the last night we have a, an amazing what do they what do they call it Belgian stew Flemish stew isn't it yeah yeah, so it's it's steak cooked in beer, basically. Yeah, funny that. They like their beer in Belgium, don't they? They, they, they really? The Belgian beers are quite popular. We went to this wonderful place uh, for Holmes' birthday where Tony and I turned up to discover they had trays of beers, didn't they, Tony? <laughs> they had trays of beers. You had four it little is. kind of champagne glass-sized uh, beers and I a did. menu. And we all did the first one. And, we did. Uh, and the, the, do you remember the guy who turned up? He didn't stay with us. Steve Davis, his name. Uh, uh, he yeah, the, he lives in Belgium. in Belgium. And goes to every single game. Well, he certainly did before the pandemic. Went to every single home and away game. And we were tasting his beer and going, God, this is all right, isn't it? And he laughed at us. He said, you know, that's the stuff that the kids drink out of the car boots in car parks. Yeah. yeah. And we went, really? <laughs> you know. Um, and it was when we got onto the more, um, the stuff, you know, the higher gravity stuff, I think, that, that, that we started to... Uh, become again uh, visibly socially relaxed it was it was just brilliant i mean we we all descended on that bar the idea was to meet up have a drink and then all disappear off to our various places to go and eat and no one did and we all just basically sat there and it, they had i think they had tapas mm. and, and that sort of stuff um before we all went off to another bar God knows. I have no that. recollection of that. I, I, I had basically I, I, I a whiteout for about an hour. A load of um, people I think, from, I think they were from Manchester. Um, that and, might be why I kind of went to sleep for an hour. Then. Yeah. And we were sat out in the garden and also on the bench inside it before, of course, going to the place that she should be forever uh, enshrined with Johnny Dyer's on stage image picture, which I wish I had handy to me. There, um, there are wish, thousands. Taken yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. It's but, specifically um, Wuthering Heights as well. Yeah, and, <laughs> and 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 it was just. I mean, the place was. You know, it, it's very easy to say we we could end up being quite maudlin. Yeah. While we're there, there because, we're not. Oh my you God! Know. Look at that. Once you see him doing that, that's <laughs> that the equivalent of Back yeah. to the Future Three when they on the when they're shooting the railway line and they go past the point of it's, no a, it's a very respectful pose i always find it's uh <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird context credit credit to the photographer in the corner mr holmes obviously <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah all, all, all i will say um the, the reason i was i was kind of introduced to the first world war on the western front it started off with my dad um who had a mate who was going out there i mean it, my dad was going out there as as far back as i can remember he, he'd come home when i was kind of you know five or six with stuff and bits and pieces. Um, but I, I remember him telling me the story of him going out there and they used to stay in the Ariane way, way back. And he went out with a couple of mates. I think the first time they went out there was sometime in the late seventies, early eighties or whatever. And they sort of sat, had, you know, reasonably respectful, had dinner, did the men in gate, all the rest of it couple of them went back and my dad and his mate stayed out and all they'd really been used to was was kind of drinking young's ordinary and <laughs> kind of courage best so you kind of you're 3.8 percent bitters and all the rest of it and the two of them basically stayed out all night drinking hobble beer 
which is what seven, seven and a half seven yeah. and a half and my dad basically said to me I, I woke up the next morning and thought death is the only option here this is this is all like all i can hope for is that for it ends now americans your beer your butt yeah. are like two and a half percent yeah, yeah. a cronenberg is 4.75 or something yeah. So, I mean, but yeah. I mean, seven and a half percent for Belgium is borderline cooking, still, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what about this though? Fruit <laughs> Capital. It's a full flavoured blonde ale with a fruity and mild sweet touch of fruity up and up. I see your eight, but I fucking shit on you. But Steve Tyler, everything that Motley Crue did, Steve Tyler and Joe Perry had done before him. Steve Tyler died in the gutter. He fucking. I love this <laughs> being absolutely no attention to your moment of glory. He's and, 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 and talking about Aerosmith. <laughs> We've been, well, I think because we were on a path that looked. You were on the path to righteousness, one, Tony. We were going to cram into one night what Steve Tyler did in a lifetime. Um, and and the, I think the point I was making was that Steve Tyler, uh, he, he, he died. He actually died in a gutter. And was saved, and I think that was the point where he kind of went, "Fuck me, I need to do something about this. I can't carry on like this." And there you are sitting there going, "I see you right for shit." Right which it, which it hasn't basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And oh. and, uh, and it was, I think that summed up the kind of general bonhomie of the night. That is that clip is is as is, is as um, iconic as Johnny's standing on the fish uh, in the fish market on the stage. You know, it, it's that kind of. Um, viral Levels. impact. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's funny. You listen to your own voice back and you think, oh, dear God, do I sound like that? But, um, yeah, I mean, that night was spectacularly brilliant. I mean, it really absolutely was. And um, it was, it just, it did it crown the whole, I mean, because the, ne the next night we set out, didn't we, um, like some sort of uh, medieval people sitting around a fire telling stories and 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 what have you and drinking in the in the um garden of the um the Ariane um but that particular night I just for someone who was so blitzed and the fact that I looked at them and, and they described beer that is sort of like five and a half six percent they described it as session beer yeah session yeah, beer I know mind you Tony that night was some session Oh, I mean, God, that's yeah. the thing. after we kind of ripped it up in there, as you said, we went off to that other pub. I generally did lose about an hour where I have yeah. I have no recollection. I remember and then I got pub. that second win and we, we ended up in the fish market with these two reprobates. Didn't yeah. We? yeah we did. Colin wants to know if when you were that hammered, you found uh, Jürgen Klopp again. Colin's actually coming with us. He's on the trip this time. Is he, Is he now? Ah. Yeah. Well, we'll see if we can find Jurgen for you. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I look forward I am... to seeing Colin, but there you go. I've got a feeling, Holmes, that Colin's one of the chaps you're doing research for. I think he's submitted some family stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, Could be. I can only remember the uh, relative's name. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. Well, listen, we should really tell people, shouldn't we? Uh, you know, how they go about. I mean, there's still time, isn't there? People can still come on mm. this trip if they haven't actually uh, applied for it. I mean, we've got that this lovely thing. Here we go. <laughs> That's all five of us, isn't it? How, 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 oh, how, magnificent. you know, serendipitous that we're all on the show together and we're actually captured there for, for immortality and uh, cartoonness. I love that actually. I didn't know your your hair had grown that that blonde and long, Johnny. But you know, anyway, I it's yeah no, I, I've got, I've got a better figure now as well. It's um you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's rather lovely. I do actually like that. So, um, Alex, does it does it fall upon you to tell the people uh, of the universe how they can still sign up for this trip? Yeah. So, I mean, you can see the if you go to the main website, um, historiatravel.org, it's at the bottom of that graphic there. That's the whole tag. But you'll find it easily enough. It's under Western Front Tours. Uh, yeah, we can we can fit a few more on if need be. Uh, so, but you haven't got long because, yeah, and you'd have to get a deposit in sort of imminently now so that we could make sure there's enough hotel rooms and stuff to add people in. So don't dither. No, don't dally. I mean, really, technically, we need to be paying by the end of this month. So you've only got about 10 days to go. But uh, as, as I hope you've you've seen and realised uh, how informative, just it's just wonderful. I mean, it, it, this is a trip of a lifetime. It really is. 
unless you go right. back like we do. Uh, and for these guys, they go back about three or four times a year. But I I, we wouldn't be going back if we hadn't enjoyed no. it. That's the absolute. Right. Unless, unless you're Richard, who's not going. Oh yeah, well I think that's a new. Ooh, I think you touched the sore point there, young young lady. Yeah. <laughs> if, um, um, can I can I can I just chuck chuck a chuck a thing in here? One of the things about the First World War and the Western Front is everything that you're kind of fed when there's an article in the news or whatever, it's very, very sort of kind of kind of twisted towards a narrative that was was born and a long, long time ago and isn't really true. And there's a really, really great story to tell about the war and the Western Front and the people who fought on it. And it's just very, very different from what you know. And I can't really describe it here after four beers and, and all the rest of it, but between... between I think them, what we're saying is all the, the hair pulling and the wailing, um, and yeah. that, which has its place. The the video you saw of Chidge, that's how they behaved on Remembrance Day. Our kind of really reverent, sad version of it came after all of those guys were gone because we hadn't earned the right to do that. For them, it was piss up. I Remember think also what... The year in London was chaos. I think what Johnny's also trying to say is culturally the way we remember it is kind of wrong. You know, I mean, the way yeah. I always look at it is, you know, so. we're going this, we go into more detail on the trip. I mean, for most of, you know, for most of the people in the war, most of the time, it was nowhere near as bad as we think it was. But then you mm. get the other side of it. And I think for the people who did suffer, it was bad. It was unimaginably bad to the extent we can't, we can't even imagine how bad it was. And it's trying to, mm. you know, find that balance and correct it. A yeah, question I think it's the... it's the everything you know is wrong yeah. aspect, and come come and come and see it because well, it's exactly. really interesting. And if there's the a question in the chat about first of all, I think my Pakistani dad would be a bit miffed at me being described as white. Uh, but yeah, we do. We follow the Indians in 1915. That's on yeah. Johnny's list, so we go and we look at them as well. And the Portuguese. Yeah, we do. We go and feel sorry for the Portuguese because the cemetery is in disrepair. But and the Australians, of course. Yeah. yeah. And the South Africans, plenty of, I mean, there's that huge number of black South Africans on that memorial in Delville Wood yeah. as well. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. One more time, people. If you want to come on this trip, get your skates on. You've got about 10 days to figure it out. Uh, Historia, I S T O R I A, travel.org. Uh, check out, I mean, just, just whack in Western Front and you'll find this tour. Uh, we do have this on a lot of our social media, this graphic with all the info. Uh, it's the 21st to the 24th of June this summer. It's uh, six, what, 649 quid, Alex? Yes. Yeah. Although <laughs> I, I think we've got a lot of snorers on this trip because quite a few have opted to, <laughs> to upgrade with a single <laughs> supplement. I know that's I know that's Nathan's reason. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Tony are going to tough it out again, aren't we? Hey, listen, mate, you, it was a pleasure. Yeah, and, and the fact that we 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 can we can absolutely talk each other to death. Awesome. Um, I mean, there's no chance of either us being an insomniac with the other one in the same room blabbering away. Is there really? No, not really. Um, no. You know, I mean, it, it it was a meeting of of of, of minds, and, and and it was just, I think you know, I think you two were friendly before this trip last time. And we really bonded, that, actually. We did. Started. Yeah, yeah we did. I mean, you know, when we turned up at Pete's house. Um, and there was this like, kind of sigh of relief as Chidge walked through the door. I thought, oh, good. You know, not not for any reason, but I didn't know Pete. I didn't know Liz. I didn't know uh, Dane. I didn't know anybody else that was in that particular room at that, that time. And so, you know, Chidge walked through the door. Oh, good. I, I've got somebody there. And we sat at the back of the coach, I think. And um, uh, I think we had Carol at the back as well. Yeah, and, yeah. And she was kind of viewing us, I think, as um, kind of naughty school kids. Um, she wasn't which, wrong. Which was, you know, not not, True not totally inaccurate, like you know, um, and I just think it was um, the whole thing. Like you said, my, my uh, uh, on top of everything else, I just seem to remember we just picked the best weather weekend they'd had in Belgium for God knows how many years. You know, it was just it's beautifully warm and hot and sunny and everything like that, and it was just with good food. I mean, I think for, for when you think of what you're getting. Uh, for the money, the food, well, you're not getting the food as such, but the, the, the company of food, the tour and everything else, the the, 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 the transport there and back, um, the hotels, and you, you're paying for an ambience, I think, and a, a kind of um, 
I, I did put in the um, the group actually that you know that many lifelong friendships were both formed and sealed there. For, for, from from our, my point of view, you know, it's nope. just I couldn't I couldn't agree I could not agree with that more. Uh, you you three you historians uh, final words on the tour on this evening. Any order you like, don't mind, just chip in. After you guys. <laughs> so uh, I'm like Richard just put that <laughs> makes you feel torn and regretful. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Probably yeah, I think one over me and Nathan. It's um it's it's a really good opportunity. You can hear you can hear some great stories about the Chelsea fans and the Chelsea players who fought in the First World War. You can learn an awful lot more about the First World War, like I say, because the, the popular myth is really, really quite inaccurate and there's a, a lot more to say about it. Um, yeah, come along. And, you know, we're, we're a reasonably decent bunch of folk and oh, yeah. you'd probably like to have a beer with us at some point. Yeah, so and learn something try. Learn something in the process. Holmes? We're kind of trying to convince a pet scouser to come as well, so we've got someone to berate. Take the piss out of, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Well, unless you win the league. Oh, oh yeah! No. Oh, mate, mate, we'll know by then, won't we? We'll know by I would then. Say, yeah, he'll yeah, be unbearable. Yeah, yeah. Can we can we have that one in abeyance, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Holmes, final word from you, my friend. I, I think just come. You know, I mean, I, I was on it last time, and I, I feel the same way as you guys. And I was sort of, you know, guiding a little bit then. You know, those nights sat in the pub and in the hotel afterwards. It's great, and you know, but. Like I said, I've never taken anyone there who's not gone back at least once. So, you know, everyone should yeah. come. No, it's brilliant. So there we go. Uh, right. We should wrap this up, people. Um, we will be back uh, on Monday. Where, uh, we've got a special show actually coming up on Monday uh, with uh, JK and me. And we will be joined by Mark Meehan in his capacity as chairman uh, of the Chelsea Supporters Trust. And uh, a member, he's one of the fan advisory board as well. And Dom Rosso as well, who's vice chairman of the Chelsea Supporters Trust. And we will be discussing all things Chelsea, Clear Lake and the Chelsea Supporters Trust. Uh, the kickoff will be half seven with a bit of luck. Uh, and of course, you can join us on YouTube, Facebook and Mixler. And uh, in addition, well, we can take your questions on all of those three. And actually, I think if... Uh, if uh, you're on YouTube and Facebook, I think I, I can actually, if I don't do it too shambolically, play them in so you see them on the screen. You know, I should have checked that out, shouldn't I? Uh, in fact, I can experiment now just to prove that I'm not lying. Let's let's fight. There we go. Let's let's have Rich. Oh, we'll have Tony. We'll have Tony. See if I can do this. Show. Yay! Look at that. See. <laughs> we can have it on screen. I wasn't lying. It does work. So there we go. We can have your. Uh, we can have your questions on the screen. So there we go. Uh, do come along, ask questions. It's it's not going to be a well. It is a bit of a Q and A. I mean, basically, if you come in here and lots ask lots of questions, we'll spend the whole time answering them. But uh, obviously, we'll we'll have a bit of talk around it as well. Uh, brilliant stuff. Now uh, you can follow the show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast. Uh, I am of course at Stamford Chidge, uh, and uh, I should. Uh, well, Tony's Grocer Jack UK, aren't you, mate? Uh, I am indeed. Of, you are, aren't you? Now, what are the others? What? What? Remind me, Alex. You're at at Churchill underscore Alex. I am, and please take note of the link to my new uh, online Ooh. publication, which yes. you can get to from there. And and it does have that free football article. If you were interested in what we were saying about how footballers should be given a break for not going straight to war. Yeah, right. You did send me a message about this, which I conveniently forgot. Uh, so it says, if you like history, uh, you could subscribe to my new online magazine with Substack. Uh, and you find it at achurchill.substack.com. What's the what's that ing? I can just right? do slash subscribe, or just that will get you there. And all right, okay. So there we go. We're, sorry, Alex. If I'd have known that earlier, I'd have shoved it as a graphic. <laughs> as, as, as you know, I can do that now because I am <laughs> that clever. Not really. I usually tech screw mastery. It up. No, far from it. I screw it up every. I was doing so well until I said, "Hey, this show's not a shambles tonight." And the minute I said that, I made it shambolic. My my therapist would have a lot to say about that. I assure you. Anyway, um, I, I was just going to mention the fact that um, uh, that Richard, um, who's quite okay, make me feel torn and regretful. His messages to you, Alex. Yeah. Okay, about the fact that he's not going, but he's saying I'm seeing Eric and Ernie when I'm thinking of Chidge and Tony sharing a room. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I can safely say that I'm not. What was it? The short, fat, hairy. What the short? No, that's, that's, that's definitely me. That's that is definitely you, isn't me. it? Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. St- Statler and Waldorf. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What's the? I can think of many other partnerships. Cannon and Ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not Mike and Bernie Winters, eh? Mike and Bernie Hinge and Bracket. <laughs> no, that's more me and J.K. Really. But there yeah. you go. Right, it's been lovely to see you all, uh, Johnny. Absolutely fantastic to see you, mate. I, I actually, well, I, 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 I will see you in June for a beer, but it'd be nice to see you before then. But if it not, was, yeah, I'm definitely, again. yeah, definitely. Holmes, you, you're a legend, mate. Lovely to see you yet again. And uh, again, I look forward to having beer with you in uh, Belgium and France. Yep, yeah, likewise, and thanks for having me. No, it's been a real pleasure and education as it always is. And uh, Alex, it's always delightful to see you. It's probably the most polite and non-sweary. That the smart bud and sexy that the, the smart buddies have actually ever been in in harness on the Chelsea fan cast. I think we, 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 yeah, I think we cited a lot of that in the Spice Island in. We did actually. That was a cracking um, day. Of that historic document. You're, so, you're, so, you're basically the fan cast gold blend couple, aren't you? They are. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. There's a bit. There's a bit of that going on, isn't there? Yeah. Well, you know. Do you know That's it's funny one, you should one, mention one, that? one for the teenagers? Yeah, yeah. it's oh, funny oh, you should oh. mention that because we've we've got an allotted uh, substitute for the word the c word basically. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, whenever we want to say the c word, we now say Gareth. <laughs> so if we ever call you a Gareth, Johnny, you'll know why. Well, you'll know why. <laughs> Alex, my love, absolutely brilliant to see you. You're an absolute legend for organising all these things. Uh, your knowledge is just brilliant. If it's if it's even half as good as it was last time, it'll be unbelievable. And I cannot, for one, wait to spend a quality weekend with you and you, Johnny and uh, Holmes. It's going to be brilliant. I can't wait. So thank Come you for, for tonight. Thanks for coming on tonight. And actually, this was Alex's suggestion. So actually, the credit for this show should absolutely go to Alex. So well done, you. It's more because I couldn't remember everything and I thought I'd just pass off the stuff I'd forgotten to one of them. <laughs> well, th- there is... Taking that, yeah. advantage of the fact that Johnny's the smartest one in the room now. Well, he certainly is. And we know it because he is, in fact, a PhD wanker. So there we go. <laughs> uh, and on that positive note, I should say to all of you lot who have been listening and watching, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will see you on Monday. Uh, until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree and keep it chills. Up the chills! Ah! Go set!